One. Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Midnight's Ap- Midnight Edge After Dark Live. We are coming to you right now from various locations. With us, all, all, as always, is Mr. Tom Connors. How are we doing tonight? And we're doing pretty good. With us again is Mr. Matt Weiss. Hey, y'all. Yep, Matt Weiss. If you haven't checked it out, check out his trailer breakdown of the Emoji Movie. It's it's fun stuff. And with us once again from Parts Unknown, Weight Unknown, the number one pick in the NFL Supplemental Draft, Mr. Beyond the Bliss. How you doing? Not too bad, gentlemen. I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, you're gonna be you're gonna be bringing in that nice uh, Canadian Football League money now. <laughs> yeah. <well. laughs> yeah. Yeah. We 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 can't all get that big Montreal Alouettes money. <laughs> so, all right, you guys. Busy weekend. We're gonna be talking box office. We're gonna be talking Comic Con. We're gonna be talking Ghostbusters. We're gonna be talking Thor Ragnarok. We're gonna be talking Star Trek. And so, let's kick it off with the weekend box office wrap up, shall we? What do you guys think? Sounds good. Absolutely. That's where a good place to start. We got a couple of viewers, so I think we're doing all right. And then, uh, and if actually, if uh, if we have time, maybe we'll take a couple questions. What do you think about that, guys? Yeah, sure. If we got time later Perfect. at the end of the show, we'll definitely do that. So to kick off the box office, what a surprise upset. Well, not a surprise so much to myself, but probably to a lot of people out there, especially some of our listeners, that Dunkirk did take the top spot. It's strange that a non-summer movie took the top spot and Valerian, well, to no one's Ooh. real surprise, tanked <laughs> badly. <laughs> so, guys, what's your thought on that? And I'm not sure. I think I'm between me and Matt. I think we're the only two who have seen Valerian. Or did you get to go see it yet, Rob? Uh, I have not gotten the chance to see it yet. I have read uh, one of the some of the original uh, comics that actually uh, that Andre sent me. All right. uh, so I do have a point of reference, but I, I haven't <laughs> seen the movie yet. Right. Well, we won't talk about it too much anyway. And I don't think Beyond you got a chance to see it yet either, right? No, because everything happened with the whole accident and yeah. everything, and that. Just and we're glad you're okay. Yeah, track, he was. So. He was supposed to join us on that uh, very first Midnight's Edge podcast, but <laughs> and we had other plans and stuff like that going on. But he had been dealing with a fender bender, so luckily he's okay and everything's taken care of. But yeah, we might get into a little Valerian talk. But what's your guys' uh, thoughts on the upset of the weekend? It's like you know, it was like a drag them out weekend. It seems like I'll say this. I want to say one thing. This is very important. This is why Valerian failed. The two lead actors pretty much suck. I think you all can agree they're not good. And here's, here's the thing. No one, I, I think I said this a podcast ago, that no one ever says, man, I really want to see a Cara Delevingne and Dane DeHaan movie. No one ever says that. <laughs> she was okay. He was just horrible. I, not only that, I, completely I, miscast, and he acts like Keanu Reeves through the entire that, film. I, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised because I've heard that. And also the thing, too, is I've heard that uh, he, he kind of he doesn't look the part. He doesn't look like this really cool, like kind of macho, sort of Han right. Solo-esque, be, I'm guessing. To be clear, the, yeah, the type. character is supposed to be your yeah, mix between like a Han Solo, almost 007 type, because he's a uh, international or uh, inner galactic federal agent is he's what he's a he major is. he's a major and you don't get that feeling from from little goblin jr you're like good lord <laughs> yeah that's a good <laughs> reference yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like dane, <laughs> dane dehan does not scream leading man to me i'm sorry no, he doesn't. You know? yeah but uh without, and without beating up too much on valerian but it, it just seems like it's all that that kind of twilight eyes sort of leading man thing where you make him sort of this sort of this soft kind of not soft but you know this softened features you know very kind of non what's the word um uh non um no well you know you know you guys know what i'm talking about right yeah he, he, he sort of fits into that robert pattinson mold of leading men yeah and hopefully like, that's not gonna last much longer i, I certainly hope because it it just seems like, like a very out of left field thing to have Dane DeHaan doing this. I think uh, uh was was it Carol? Or I'm, I'm Cara, getting the Cara, name. Cara, I think it's Cara Delevingne. Is how you Cara, Cara, Cara Delevingne. Yeah, Cara, yeah. She she's been getting a lot of hate towards this. On articles have been pulling up. I'm like, what what's the hate here? I mean, Dane's. I think Dane's just uh about as uh or no 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 just worse than uh, what Kara's doing here. So, like, it's it's not a terrible... Like, to me, it's not such a, a terrible movie. It's just dull. It's just incredibly dull. It's just... 
Like this had, could have had so much more promise and it doesn't deliver it on any stretch of the imagination. And that's the other part. It's lacking so much imagination in a film based entirely on imagination. <laughs> yeah, I mean, here's the thing. The, the visuals, from what I see, of course I didn't see it, but the visuals are fantastic. They look they are. like some of the best that I've ever seen, just from the trailers. However, Man. they didn't really do a good job selling the movie. They just, and again, I didn't see it, but I'm just basing off the trailer. That they said, oh, hey, there's a movie. And I said this last podcast, too. There's just a movie about uh, about P- two people, Cara Delevingne and Dane DeHaan, need to do some stuff. And then they do some stuff. And stuff happens, and then more stuff happens. And it's pretty, but stuff happens. It's like there's yeah. no real sense of, okay, there's an actual underlying plot going on here, and there's some character dynamic, whatever. And people don't notice, and, and I'm going to plug film, film theory, theory on this, because... There, they appointed to me, not appointed to me directly, but they made a video that it came apparent to me that a lot of things from Star Wars that were taken from Valerian, a lot. Oh, and yeah. it's interesting mm-hmm. how this could have been a chance to say, oh, this is the, this is where that that kind of weird zany, I believe it's French comic, this is where it all came yes. from. And I'm like, and they're like, they, it could have been a return to form. It could have been something like, oh, so you think Star Wars is great? Wait till you get a load of this. And I feel like it could have been a great competitor to Star Wars and kind of be like, oh, we did it. For, you may have done it first on the big screen, but we're going to take the rain back. And of course, from what this, from what we're seeing here, this is an utter disaster. And it's funny because oh, yeah. Luke Besson last year was like, oh man, that that Christopher Nolan, man, he ain't that great. He ain't that good. And then all of a sudden, ironically, Dunkirk. Slaps the crap out of Valerian and Valerian bombs. $20 million. Wow. That's even worse than I thought it was going to do. I mean, that's. Yeah. And, and well, a $300 million budget, I believe, overall. With yeah. uh, well, 200 reported, and I'm sure with all the advertising that went along with it, <laughs> at least 250 altogether. And and we already know that this movie is going to kill Europa. So yeah. it, well, it, I just I had just read that oh actually God. their stock tanked actually. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. No. Just... One, of, one of the things I noticed though is that you know, I was looking actually through the listings after even after well, it's been out for almost for three weeks or so. Spider Man Homecoming. Spider Man Homecoming had twice as many showings than Valerian did, and it just I can't help but think movie movie theater chains were right. saying we're looking at them like we can't show this you know we we can't commit that many screens to it or run time right because yeah you know, spider-man is still gonna be doing well well spider-man yeah. is doing well and that's a big misconception going around guys and I want to reiterate because Andre wanted me to really reiterate to you guys sorry I can't talk tonight that spider-man homecoming is doing very very good in comparison considering it's a reboot after what happened before the whole Sony fiasco and the amazing Spider-Man just to interject that whole thing really damaged right the that's brand. what he meant yeah mm. and it, you got a lot of people just like with Wonder Woman at first that were a little leery to go see it but then the movie decided you know people come, decided to start showing up and you're starting to see that now in fact I think number wise I'd have to look for sure but I know Spider-Man is getting very close to Wonder Woman already overall so it's it's, it's going to be a neck and neck race come to the end of the year until like Star Wars comes out where a lot of these top movies will kind of peter out here at the end of the summer but we're kind of getting to that point where we're getting to the end and valerian was just another one that was stuck in with a bunch of competition and what about dunkirk making 50 million dollars who expected that here's I mean, the I thing expected it to do well but go ahead yeah no here's the thing tom sorry to interrupt i i, I think i think uh dunkirk specifically did very well considering the competition and the and the time it came out that goes to show you that christopher nolan sooner or later is going to be in the conversation with the greats like uh, I would say even Spielberg <laughs> some people may even say in terms of the, his consistency and the quality of his films and the fact that he's able to one of the only full, few directors now that can actually get butts in seats with the name alone I also right. but I do say this I do think if Dunkirk would have came out in November like a November date and really pushed that Oscar buzz and really went for right. the veteran kind of war film demographic. That usually, it seems to and me... And that's what I thought they would do, but I think I know a reason why they didn't, and that was because they didn't want to go up against Thor and Justice League. That, and, that makes sense. That makes sense. And I pointed out right away that I think Warner Brothers has learned with, uh, at least with Interstellar especially, and after uh, Inception, that Christopher Nolan is that type of director where you just got to say, Christopher Nolan directed. 
blah 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 and people will show people up will it doesn't matter it. Yeah. what the hell it is yeah. it could be a guy farting on screen for 20 minutes oh. and the critics would say that's brilliant you know but still it's just the point i mean i'm not trying to cut down christopher nolan at all i love him as a director he's a great director i'm looking forward to seeing dunkirk i'm just saying he's just that he's gotten to that point now where all people have to say is you know, like I said in the last podcast, just like Scorsese was back in the day and stuff like that. All you got to say is it's a Christopher Nolan movie and people are there. And they proved that this weekend, I think, with a 50 million. Nobody expected it to do 50, I don't think. Yeah, I think, again, yep. it has to do with his name. Even though I, I would predict that it would have actually made maybe close to 80 million, not even maybe possibly 90 million if it opened in a holiday, like winter, like a uh, fall date. It doesn't neg you know, negate the fact that you're pointing out, Tom, that this is a smash hit for a film like this. You know, very, you know, kind of especially this time film. of the year. Yeah. yeah, in this time of year during the summertime, where people aren't really looking to see that. Now, one thing I will point out: Did we discuss the girls' trip? Did we mention that yet? I know that no, came in number. I was two. about to say that. Yeah, <laughs> actually, right. Yeah. It's interesting because you know, uh, this is going to sound a little controversial, but let, let's be real here. It, I'll say, I'll put it this way: Girls' trip pretty much is what Girls' Night is for a another demographic of I'm, I'm i'm black well it did so. better but it's like okay right. i look at it this way this is going to show hollywood and i hope they're listening and they get the actual right message this time right if you do good quality i don't know all the good quality of it is but if you do at least original material directed at women they will come out to see the film if it looks interesting right. uh, this movie proved that bad moms proved that you know and i gotta admit bad moms was one of the funnier movies of this last year so or i think it was this last year it came out right Last yes. year, somewhere, yeah, last year. yeah, somewhere around last year, I th right? I think last November or so. Yes, oh, right. And then they got the sequel already ready for this Christmas. But regardless, this just goes to show that if you do something that women will be interested in and make a good product, I'm assuming it's good. Considering you know, obviously, women talk and they tell their friends just like everybody else does. This is a good movie. Go see it. it seems and like the it numbers was show. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll check real quick. Double. Um, let me check Thirty-one right million now. dollars for a female-driven comedy is a massive hit. It has about a yeah, seven, that's... seven, uh, seven percent approval rating overall, like a seven percent. But the audience rating gave it about a four, four point four, like a ninety percent. So the audience rating is really high, but the critic rating is pretty. Well, that's it's good. not the new. It's yeah, good. that's not. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's not surprising. But that means this movie looks like it's probably one of those movies. Like this is going to be this year's Bad Moms. Is what I'm trying to get mm -hmm. to. Without rambling. Possibly, on. possibly. I mean, if you know they're going to have a universe is going to do a sequel. I mean, the only reason why I was bringing up oh. before is kind of this thing where it, it, some people can say, "Oh, well, it's basically just you know a derivative <laughs> of um of what we saw with Hangover. Rough Night. No, it's Rough Night. You oh, know, female centric but... movie is just right. with a for, for a blacker audience. And I mean, right. it's kind of this thing where, even though that may be the case, it's ironically is getting better reviews than Rough Night did from Sony. So it's very interesting to see that kind of play out a little bit. Where well, not only this, this was kind of perfect. Not to interrupt you, sorry, Beyond. No problem. This Go is ahead. kind of this is kind of perfect counter programming to Dunkirk. Mm. It is. It is. I would say that. Yeah. Is, yeah In a way, it was like they played this almost perfectly. They're like, all right, we've got an idea here. The guys are going to go see either Dunkirk or Spider-Man or Valerian or War for the Planet of the Apes. Let's give the women something good. And they knew they planned this perfectly almost. This is one of the few times where I would say besides Dunkirk now where they decided to actually release a film properly and do a good job doing it at the same time as far as getting it out there at the right time and it making a lot more money than it probably could any other time of the year. Because, yeah, you could he could have released least this in november warner brothers could have pushed it back but they've got justice league then and then what do you do next you put it in december okay well there's star wars coming out in december so you know and there's a ton of other oscar bait in that time so i think they just mainly wanted to avoid the oscar season mm -hmm. for a reason and, and at first i thought it was a dumb move but now i see it was uh, the perfect move but we, yeah we should move on from this but any more thoughts on that guys well just one the girls um was it Girls Night? What was it? Uh, Girls Trip actually has a twenty-eight million dollar budget, so they've already made that back. So perfect. Um, yeah. So we'll, we'll we'll get a sequel to that. Um, another thing: Spider Man Homecoming is actually hanging in there at number three, and actually beat, did beat War for the Planet of the Apes this week. Yeah, here's the thing about million. Planet of the Apes. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, yeah, that's another upset. Oh, yeah, that's real kind of War for the Planet of the Apes isn't doing as well as I think it should be doing. I don't know if you guys I agree. agree. I think Dawn had a similar pattern, unfortunately. It was one of those movies that a lot more people discovered later on on 
cable and video again. Same thing with the first one. Do you it did respectably, and same thing will happen with this one, but yeah. Okay. Do you Go think ahead. there's a possibility that perhaps even though the films are phenomenally rated, that there's this thing where it's not able to entice audiences, as we're clearly seeing here, where it's great, gets great reviews from critics and fans, but audiences in general don't aren't really looking at it too much, at least at the level that I feel like it should be. I could be wrong. I think it's... I was going to say, I think it's just more so the competition, to be okay. honest. Mm -hmm. if And I've said it before. If they would have pushed Apes off at least till August, oh, God, it would have owned August. Because I can't think of anything coming out in August right now that would even remotely touch it. Even, so, like, even something like September would be like... Yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I'm not trying to push so, it off the No, off the no, no, but then you got entirely. the problem with the kids being in school, and that's where the studios oh, are saying, fuck that, no yeah. way. So, yeah, but August, I think, early August would have been perfect here, like in about a week and a half, two weeks, or whatever. Even if you opened it on a Wednesday night, you know. Right. Well, the tradi then you're up against tr the, the traditionally August releases are one are films that studios don't have any confidence in. Exactly. And... um. Except you know, except for uh, a couple years ago when uh, Guardians of the Galaxy that was an, actually that was an August first release. I don't know if you guys remember remember that. And that's the uh, kind of yeah, the mentality I'm having. Do it in a time where it's got no competition, so the word of mouth yeah. can help. We already knew that yeah. Suicide, Suicide Squad also copied Marvel and did that in the same date, pretty much. Oh, yeah. The yeah. August first or second. Now I think it did help Suicide Squad to do as well as it did. I think the brilliant marketing, not to get off topic too much, helped Suicide Squad to succeed, and that's because it was able to own the month, and that could have been the same thing with Apes. And I think August is perfect for Apes. It's kind of the the last hurrah of the summer. Yeah. And I think the feeling of the Apes is like it's not a, it's not a midsummer movie to me. It's more of an end of the summer because it's like it's kind of a it's kind of a fall movie, but not quite there. So August does right. fit better. It fits better for that, and you can make it a little more cerebral, like they've seemed to be leaning towards more cerebral action. And I think it would have worked, but unfortunately, they thought, "Hey, middle of summer, it's gonna work." And well, I know Fox I saw it, Matt it. saw it, right? And I don't know about yes. the rest of you, but we loved it. And I thought this is like Oscar, Oscar caliber shit. And unfortunately, it's not gonna get any notice. But I mean, between it'll the effects and the story and the acting, awards. Oh yeah, yeah, but that's, that's not that's it. throwaway. That's a given, you know. It's 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 you know it's gonna get that type of accolade just because it is a technical based film. But actual like let's say acting, screenplay, directing, yeah, it's probably just gonna get pushed aside. Yeah. And we of course we know how biased the Oscar, the Oscar committee can be just because a lot of them are coming from an older generation. They're like all oh, these new movie technical movies. Oh, it needs to be dramas, and that's a whole other topic. I don't want to well, get just, into that. Just from just remind the Academy that Andy Serkis, uh, who plays Caesar, is British. That's 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 that'll do it. Yeah. Okay. True. There you go. Well, we have a long show to, show ahead of us, guys. So I thought we may try Great. to yeah, accelerate we should things kind of move bit. on. Yeah, so let's let's so move let's get on. Into yeah. Ghostbusters, correct? Yeah. Well, we were going to go into <laughs> well, we <laughs> yeah, we might as well just get into Ghostbusters. <laughs> Want a new drug? And we have Matt here, of course, of Matt's Trailer Breakdown, as we mentioned earlier. And he's our resident Ghostbuster expert, even though we've all been around long enough to have seen the film and love the film. I think, Beyond, you like the movie too, right? The original? Yeah, I've, seen, I've, mo yeah, I've seen most of it. I was seeing, when I was seeing it on TV, I was like, oh, yeah, this movie's actually pretty, pretty, pretty good. It's not too bad. Saw it, saw it in the theater in 1984, then snuck into the theater next door, saw Gremlins. Oh, <laughs> I do love me some Gremlins, though. I do love that. So, so Ghostbusters and Gremlins in the yeah. same night. Now, I got to ask you something, just because, and this is real quick, because I know a couple of you even lived out in the, uh, Rob, you lived, did you live out in the New York area at that time? Yes, yes. Now, there was rumors that at that time, Ghostbusters was, well, like, really, it upset a lot of people over in New York, so a lot of the reason, like, Gremlins outplayed Ghostbusters, like, two to one in ticket sales, I guess, in that area because of that, because people were so pissed off about Ghostbusters shutting down half of New York for most of the year before that. Is that true, or do you remember anything like that? Well, or that I, well, I was kind of, I was, I was a bit younger then, but most movies shot in the, that are shot in New York shut down a good portion of the city anyway. So, I mean... Yeah, there was probably probably something to that. I mean, uh, and it, if you listen to um, WCBS radio, which is based out of New York, you will often hear, you know, don't go on the west side. There's a movie shoot in the in the area, you know. So there are, yeah, there are a lot of people who get ticked off about that, but I don't think in enough numbers to really uh, make a that huge a difference at the box office, though. 
Like I said, I could yeah. be wrong. If anybody knows better, I'll Well, I'll I know they them. played really well. But anyway, yeah, go ahead on that, Matt, because you're our expert. <laughs> um, on the commentaries, they talk about it a lot that uh, the scenes that were shot outside the firehouse and uh, 55 uh, Central Park West where uh, uh, the Gozer building, of course, and um, where that that would uh, be the, the top two spots particularly. And I think the hotel sequence is one of them too. I'm not, I can't remember that exactly, but I know for sure those, the, the firehouse sequence where the, the containment uh, grid uh, uh, shuts down and the ghosts are released is one of those uh, scenes because the hook and ladder eight building is, on a, I think it's on a corner of one of those those active uh, those active uh, bergs. If uh, uh, Rob can right. uh, confirm me if I'm right or wrong on that, because I'm pretty sure that hasn't changed since the '80s. But yeah, um, that, that area, that, a lot of that area is still the same. And they so, use it in other movies too. Yeah. Yes, um, but I'm pretty sure it was just those two avenues particularly that were just you know really chaotic and hectic because they had a lot of shooting outside of those buildings for either exterior shots or just you know the the big uh the big uh climactic scenes of the film itself right which famously is where they had to purchase the they had to definitely get the ghostbuster name because they had a bunch of extras hundreds of extras screaming ghostbusters ghostbusters but anyway oh, on to uh, the yeah that's onto okay. the comic-con news go ahead and give us a rundown quickly of the comic-con news matt that you can remember offhand i know i was kind of excited to see some of it and very unexcited to hear and see some of the other stuff but go ahead and give us your overall uh, observation of what came out of Comic Con because that was the big news early on. Yes, so apparently it looks like Paul Feig is out. So I am more than okay with this because it's been something that, that like because if you're you, everybody seems to remember because Midnight's Edge covered this a lot where <laughs> Paul Feig was Paul Feig was one of the uh, primary problems with the film. If if no one oh, knew that God. already, <laughs> yes, because. <laughs> It, this may turn into a trailer breakdown rant, and I can hear Rob laughing already, so this is already starting <laughs> off well. So, um, it seems that Paul is out, and I think that's probably one of the... Hooray for Hollywood! Hooray for Hollywood! Because I don't get what they were thinking and why... Well, and other than Amy Pascal picking this, which didn't need to... Like, three times, and like, it's it's the beckoning of Beetlejuice, for Christ's sake. And like, you just, you're just asking for trouble. You're just asking for trouble with a guy that does subversive comedy where Ghostbusters has never been a subversive comedy, nor has it been a comedy first. It's a comedy it's a comedy glue of a right. of, of horror and, and supernatural. Right. Supernatural That's the joke right. is that all these guys are playing it straight, basically, except right. for there's a little wink wink from Venkman to from, the camera yeah. because he's kind of the Bugs Bunny of the group. But otherwise, all these other characters are playing it completely straight. And there's where the humor comes out of that. Right, and so we go back to, you know, Answer the Call did not, did not. I mean, everybody likes to fight about that, like, oh, it, it, it uh, surpassed the, the market needed. It did not. When Paul Feig came out and said that we need a half a billion dollars from the box office, including uh, home release sales, too, like, that was this little hooray for Holtzman thing where, again, they're trying to push one character. They know they have a problem when you have to push <laughs> one character out of the titular four that they said, these are your four, uh, these are your four female Ghostbusters, women are funny, get over it, shtick. Right. And that, again, this wasn't a woman problem. This was a writing problem. This was right. a chemistry problem. There was nothing in this movie that showed, like, other than, you know, bits of improv that you just knew Paul Feig and Katie Dippel, the co-writer of the script, had nothing into it. Right. Well, then just to kind of relate to what the news, we'll get into more of that kind of stuff on a, we got a podcast talking about Sony coming up and we'll probably really dig into that quite a bit, but um, just to kind of get into the other news. So they basically announced that there will be another live action film besides the animated film in 2019, correct? Yes. Uh, I believe the animated film is going to be in 2018 or I, I think something in that nature because they didn't talk about Ghostbusters Ecto Force, which was uh, Ivan Reitman's, uh, discussed animated series which was going to take place in uh the 2050s sort of i was wondering if there would be any light shed on that or if that's completely dead all altogether because he seemed pretty avid going forward on that because that left a little bit of an opening to whether or not this was going to be atc or the prime 84 team which idw publishing the guys that do their comics has referred to the original team as being the prime ghostbusters and um, right and that's supposed to be the team we're going to see in this new film. Now, my question is, I heard and I read about a little bit about it where it's going to be a prequel. Is that true? Is that um, what you mean? 
it's not confirmed yet. It, they kind of gave a little bit of feeling towards that. I thought the animated movie might be that prequel because the rumor is is that that's going to be the Slimer movie because oh, everybody everybody wants a Slimer movie. Remember remember when the real Ghostbusters cartoon came out and everybody wanted Slimer? Well, I there don't... is some validity to that because I do remember <laughs> as the movie was coming out last year, they were talking about the animated film kind of being about Slimer because the film was supposed to be a setup for that or something like that. The, the, well, the, the little they adventure did some he has in the film. stupid yeah. little thing where he goes to a portal and that's it. I'm like, uh, I haven't seen that movie since I saw it in the theater and I'm just like, I don't want to ever see that movie ever again. Because that movie needed a lady Slimer in it because, uh... you know, we, we need to have one on each side for each for each gender, for each gender, for everybody. Like, but, yeah, everyone so... be equal and then blah, 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 and let's shoehorn <laughs> throw, all this crap. The throw, this is... the throw the, the F on. Who, do, who yeah. the fuck cares if they're, what gender they are when they're dead? <laughs> Lady Slimer, tell me wonder what his Tinder profile looks like. Jeez. No. Right. Anyway. Okay. Let's anyway. Stop. Um. Yeah. So like, there was some crossovers. I was actually excited to see. There's like a big Ninja Turtle crossover, and I love the yes. look of that that comic book cover that we have the picture for in our uh, <laughs> right in there. Our graphics there. It's right there. That and, was actually pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I like that because it's also paying homage to Turtles too, and I like the turtle yes. figures. But now I'll get to the part that I didn't like. <laughs> All right. And that is so... the just can't let the girls die. I'm sorry. And it has nothing to do with them being women. Don't get me wrong. It's just, okay, yes. let me put it a better way. I, they won't let it answer the call die. Yes. So, yeah, they, they need to push uh, that under the rug and just act like it never happened and do it again. You can do a thing where you have the extreme Ghostbusters where you have this one chick. You. That one chick, uh, what's her name? Kylie Griffin. Kylie get her. Griffin. And well, she, the, 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 the funny thing is, is that the whole thing that seems to be pushing this uh, crossover that no one, no one really expected to do, especially after Ghostbusters answered the call. And like the first thing I want to point out is that this is a, a huge retcon to fix something that should have been done in the first place. But I guess, you know, we got to fix this up because this is just nothing more than a salvage operation. But here we go. Um, so the answer the call, uh, the answer the call, uh, uh, Ghostbusters Prime crossover entitled. Uh, Ghostbusters 101 for IDW Publishing had this where the the two universes basically collide, but there's a third team as well, and the the third team is uh, a team led by Janine Melnitz, uh, the the receptionist for uh, the Prime Ghostbusters, uh, because uh, and first off, like just to, let's just say that that receptionist will always be better than a dumb Chris Hemsworth right off the bat because that's not going to push any kind of character whatsoever. Anyway. The character, uh, Janine's niece, uh, Kate Banner, leads uh, three other characters to be the Ghostbusters 101 team, oh, and God. they have more character than the, the ATC team. Mm -hmm. And throughout this comic, there, it's just, you know, oh, we're different, we're different, and there's a couple slams in there, too. And I thought it was remarkable, too, that uh, writer Eric Burnham, of the he's been the writer for the series and uh, the ongoing uh, Ghostbusters comic series since uh, 2011, that uh, he threw some jabs into ATC, like very thinly veiled jabs, where by the end of the series, it looks like Holtzman is the only one wearing the uh, the ATC garb. Right. Well, just to kind of move things forward, yes. though, then. So, so then um, there's going to be this, besides the comic crossover, it kind of, they kind of hinted from what I could tell from the footage on the uh, Monday Matt video I saw where they were kind of hinting that they were going to try and cross over the girls into the original Ghostbuster universe on screen as well, is what uh, I kind of got sounds... was the basics for Ghostbusters 3, and oh my god. That sounds yeah. ridiculous. I mean, here's the thing, again, I keep mentioning <clears throat> Extreme Ghostbusters, where again, you had that one cool chick... Uh, you know, Kylie and she was, you know, female representation is fine. I mean, nothing's not terrible, but she no. wasn't a shoehorn character. You know, she was, you know, cool. You know, she was part of the team, and everyone seemed to be okay with her, and it was fine. It was, it wasn't this thing where, like, every five seconds she stops looking at the camera. I'm a woman, and I'm a Ghostbuster, and I support girl power, and you better accept. Oh. It. <laughs> it's well, like that's what it was with Ghostbusters. Answer the call word. It's this constant thing where we get hammered over the head constantly, over and over and over. And now I'm going to start to rant now, where it's like, <laughs> oh, well, you know, everything has to be about girl power, blah blah blah. I know, of course. 
course, of course, our our narrator Rob here was the one that narrated the entire debacle of this Amy Pascal. Like, well, I'm Amy Pascal, and I really want this like a female empowerment movie. And then, even though it fails, I I, I remember I, had, I got into a Twitter fight a couple months ago where someone some some. It came up in a conversation, I forgot how it started, but it was something about Ghostbusters, and I'm like, Ghostbusters failed, it was an absolute failure, and the movie's crap, and whatever, I was just blatantly pointing it out, and you remember this, Tom, because you got into it a little bit too, and there were these bunch of social justice warriors that were defending it, saying, well, uh, well, it made, more than, yeah. it made more than his budget, and, 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 and like, we're like, no, 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 that's not how films work, that's not how it works. Ah, uh, marketing, marketing. Yeah, marketing right. and well, not of course, that. Yeah. theater and chains, what they get so. for it and all that. And it's basically where I'm like, just, just admit it. This movie's garbage. It's not good. And I think I even said it, like, I think the death nail in the whole thing, I think, would put it down was, like, I said, this movie didn't even make as much as the original movie did in 1984 dollars. Fuck inflation. You even, don't even have to get on that. <laughs> even the sequel made more than me. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, there was trying to people trying to play off that the, this movie made more. This than is better than one. Ghostbusters too. I'm like, oh well, you know, because it's a carbon copy of the first one that you just gotta hate this movie. And I like Ghostbusters too because it's an I actual do. Ghostbusters movie. Right. Like, but, but anyway, um, yeah. but anyway, it, it has it, its moments. Yeah, it does. Like, there's moments. There's the 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 what She's is it? The courtroom sequence. <laughs> She's a harbor chick. I mean, I where are you ever gonna see size, Ray? <laughs> Where where are you ever gonna see a uh, a Statue of Liberty powered by an NES Advantage joystick? <laughs> I'm like that that's just that that's just a power a testament that Ghostbusters rocked and Nintendo rocked the world. Not to right mention there. that, but Rick Moranis stole the second movie even oh, more so than he did yeah. the first movie. As but just to move along, so yeah, that was kind of the big announcements. Was there any other big announcements that you wanted to touch on to Ghostbusters before we moved oh. along? Oh, yes. Um, so not only are they going to try and uh, Kylie Griffin, uh, I think it's more Holtzman that they want to inject in this one where the others are just going to be cameos. And I'm like, eh. I actually like Holtzman. I'm not, I'm not, Holtzman is a guilty pleasure for me. Uh, I mean, I understand me. the whole steampunk kind of slash yeah. semi goth kind of well she's she should have been egon's no daughter me, so. she should have been fucking egon's daughter yeah that, been the that's catalyst true, that's for true. this yeah. whole thing yeah. but anyway to move along yes go ahead man so they're they're going to be injecting that and the biggest offense that seems to be coming out of this is that harold ramus's last work for ghostbusters the video game from 2009 is now considered non-canon which I don't see why they had to do that. There's no reason to. You can still do uh, Ghostbusters. They, they could have even made a movie that. out of that right there. They could have just like it said, is you know the what? movie. And that's, and that's the thing. Stuff. They can even they can even remaster it. Like they can have the movie. Here's how easy for them to make money: take the the game, make it into a script, make the movie, then make a remaster of the original game that people can buy for like a really good decent price. Yeah. You can make so much profit, then have maybe uh, some merchandise tie in too. Yeah, just up the level. Yeah, I would have been off for of that. But uh, unfortunately, the problem with the game is. Is some of the performances are a little stagnant. We're not going to say uh, who. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, who? I can't hear you. Never mind. Anyway, so <laughs> it's certainly not Bill Murray. <laughs> of course it is. It's not Bill Murray. Why would you but, think uh, that? Moving on. <laughs> moving on. So right. other like, than that, like Ready Player that, One, gentlemen. Let's talk about Ready Player okay. One. All right. Yeah, right. Well, I think Matt had one more thing to add there, but and then we can move along. The, yeah. The thing is, the biggest offense of that is, is that that kind of throws away the canon of what the the comics did, because the the IDW publishing comics that started in 2011 as the ongoing series were based entirely after the events of the video game. So they're throwing away all the comics too. It makes so, no sense. It makes no sense. And the Ghostbusters and the Call Team are getting their own mini series in October. Yeah, I've seen that too. So anyway, then are they are they gonna are they gonna throw away the Larry Storch, uh, Forrest Tucker gorilla version too, or is that? I, still... No, I think that's I think that's immortal. I think you can't touch that now because that <laughs> that's probably more Ghostbusters than the ATC team. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, was, moving was, along to Ready. Oh yes, we need to talk about oh, Ready Player yeah. One. Ooh. This cool new movie that has a lot of video games and Iron Giant is in there for some reason and, uh, and Deadpool. Steven Deadpool. Did you, did you see Deadpool in there? There's Deadpool and Harley Quinn. They That's make a cameo not... in there. Yeah, they're there. I tried to catch as much as they're possible. They're there. If you, if you, you look at look at um the, the main guy. I forgot his name. Where he's walking into this like hall room filled filled with all of this techno babble. You see Harley Quinn and Deadpool both walk towards the camera. 
from the left side. So they're there. And there's another shot with Deadpool where he's with Iron Giant, where Iron Giant's coming in out of nowhere. And then you have DeLoreans and all this other crap. Can someone please explain to me what this is? Because I'm not going to lie. I have no idea what Ready Player I... One is. All I know is that it has to do with some guy in a video game, and it's like Tron sort of... Tron, I think it's Tron meets Fast and the Furious meets Iron Giant meets Deadpool meets Harley Quinn meets um, dystopian like future. Yeah, <laughs> but, but why Iron Giant? I don't understand why. Is... I have no idea. I know why. I know why. Warner, I know Warner Brothers why. has the rights. Why? Exactly. Tell us, please. Matt is correct. He very good. He got an A today because if you notice <laughs> outside. Because outside of the DeLorean, everything that you talked about, well, except for I didn't see Deadpool. But well, Harley, Deadpool's in there. Deadpool is in there. I swear. I, I everything, swear else, everything else besides the DeLorean and Deadpool so far that all of y'all mentioned, Ooh. and you missed Freddy Krueger. Oh, yes. Yeah, all owned by Warner Brothers. And mm-hmm. that was the same thing that I didn't like about the Batman movie, and I didn't really discuss in my review, and I probably should have. Because the bad guys were cool, but they were all fucking Warner Brothers characters. They, why didn't they even at least try to get a few other villains like Darth Vader? Shit like that is all I was going to say. You're talking That's about the talking. Lego Batman the, movie? The Lego Batman movie. Yeah, that movie of kind the... of, like, on a side note, that movie kind of underperformed a little bit, which is kind of interesting, did it not? It did not do as well as they were hoping. I liked the Gremlins. I liked some oh, of the other villains. Oh, see right there on the screen. Oh, you missed it. I, okay, I didn't really. Uh, I could try. I could try to make out some of it, but it was right so there. blurry. And that yeah. was my. That's my only complaint so far with this trailer. Is that I love the idea. I love the concept. But I'm so sick and tired of these CGI epics. If you're going to do this, this might as well have been an animated film. Okay, I see Deadpool now. I I see it now. Yeah. But yeah. He's more of the comic version of Deadpool. He's not really the. Uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, they can, I don't think they can, they'll be able to get away with that. <laughs> no, right. No, no. So they obviously they obviously and being Spielberg, I'm sure it was real easy for him to farm out a few people to get in. Oh like, yeah, obviously the DeLorean. The DeLorean, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, anybody so, got any more you know like feelings on? I didn't. I want. I'm kind of looking for it, but I'm just kind of. Eh, yeah, like you I don't, don't seem like to be that effects. into this Tom at all. You're just kind of like the yeah. Effects. It's like the effects. I'm getting so played out on these overly drawn, just too much CGI, too much. I want more practical. I just, I want more practical. But and let's, I, be I honest, let's be honest here. You can't do this with super practical. Well, no, 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 no. no. Yeah, right. This is one of those things where it's obviously set up for this. But I don't know. I, I, maybe this trailer just didn't give me the representation I needed, and too much is too happening too fast. It doesn't seem to be getting a lot of traction happen, either. Like, this, trans- yeah. Di- this to me looks like Avatar, but with, with video games. Yeah, That's I what it looks like. Avatar and Tron. That's what I think yeah. I told you matter beyond before. Yeah, it looks like Avatar meets Tron. I said, yeah, just kind of. Okay. Do we? Yeah. Okay, uh, is anybody going to predict if this is going to be a? Uh, I don't want to see it. if this is going to be a mediocre return for for Steven Spielberg. What was because what was his last movie? Bridge of Spies. Yes, sir. yeah, but that was yep. kind of more of a vanity project. Yeah, right? that was that more was, like was, Oscar bait. Yeah. Yeah, a lot. Of this, shit, like, this will be his first return to commercial film since God, because otherwise they've all been more like vanity projects and Oscar bait since what? Um, since ever? I mean, since War of the Worlds? Probably. Mm, yeah. yeah, that sounds about right. I'm trying to think here. May I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> unless somebody out there in the chat can. Tell us otherwise. Put it I'm in the comments. To... Put it in the comments. Yeah. I'm trying to think of Spielberg's last fun movie he did because he used to do that. That used to be his routine. He'd do one fun movie, then he'd do a serious movie, then he'd do a fun movie, serious movie, fun movie, so on, so on, that's, so on. That's what ga- that that routine gave us a, a go- uh, uh, not Ghostbusters. I wish <laughs> the Lost World, Jurassic Park. So we we got that a little bit. Well, not only that, it was also because we also that, bleh, that was the reason we got Schindler's List and Jurassic Park in the same that, year as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't want to say I don't want to say I think this is going to bomb, but I don't think this is. It, it just looks like a crowded mess. It seems like it, another Valerian waiting to happen. And Joseph that, Solano, oh. and that's the kind of vibe I got to it from it too. But Joseph Solano said in the chat that big B A F G, big friendly giant or big fucking giant, whatever the hell it was, the Spielberg big friendly giant was his last fun unquote unquote fun movie. But I don't remember anybody saying they had any fucking fun at that movie. But anyway, sorry, my, my theater was dead empty. <laughs> Zippo Zippo says Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was quote unquote oh, fun to shit all over. Pointed out though. <laughs> Joseph did point out Tintin, and I think that did get a little bit of that did get some good reviews. <laughs> I said I said Valerian is this year's Tintin, another foreign <laughs> property that that 
they just expect everybody to flock to see, which they don't. It's just a hollow movie. Like the a lot of the the European comics one. I think uh, you and I talked about this, Rob. Where it's yeah. just it's just very hollow. Uh, it's very Generic. hollow. I like read some of the Valerian comics after the movie, and I'm like, I can kind of see where they had a hard time pulling a lot of character out of this film, but I still don't understand where the fuck they well, got Dahan. It's, it's where Marvel, like, because like, they Marvel was supposedly, and I'm going to get hate for this, I know it, I just know it, where uh, Marvel you know it. Uh, started... Out, <laughs> <laughs> Marvel yeah, started... Know it. I'm sorry, to Marvel. Start, yeah, you're fine. Uh, Marvel started out their characters so you could actually put your shoes into the character. Well, well, put your feet in the character's shoes so you could just understand them and kind of sympathize, empathize. These characters, they want you to be the character as you read. They want you to emulate how the character feels rather than empathizing and sympathizing and uh, you know uh, waiting for the cliffhanger because they're they're in those comics there aren't really cliffhangers. There's not like there's no. Uh, there's no tune in next time or tune in to, or grab the next issue to see what happens next in these comics, uh, uh, like not Marvel comics, but the Valerian and Tintin comics. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, does everybody have a loud exhaust? This is 2017 is the, the, the summer of the loud exhaust for me. Jeez. Do you yeah, guys hear that? The, yeah, this is the exhaust pipe I can hear. They, usually <laughs> they, they, people do that. Is that well, they... I thought maybe it was some of his <laughs> bodily functions. But <laughs> 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 Anyway, no, go on, go on. Then, Will, okay, anybody yeah. else got anything to say about Pl Ready Player One? Because, like, I'm, I, at this point, with this, what we got so far with this teaser, I'm just not feeling it. Well, I will I say think... one thing. I did like the the reference to uh, to Willy Wonka imagination. I did like that. I thought the orchestra music yeah. worked. Yeah, for me. it was all right. It, it just to me though, it, it was just too much of a clusterfuck of effects. It's like, look at this. We got all this. We got a little. I will it admit though, like, it, 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 like I did like. Uh, here's here's a great example of. Uh, uh, you know how Pixar does their Easter eggs? Yeah. Or how, I'm trying to think of a really good example, because there's, there's an example in my head, but I can't figure it out, but it'll come to me, where they'll have Easter eggs that are there, but they're not so much in your face. Like, this was a little bit discombobulated. Like, I think they could have kept shots like Iron Giant and the DeLorean, but they should have scaled it back a little. One thing I actually didn't like is everything looked a little bit, like, dark. It didn't look bright enough. If you notice, very that, Snyder ish. Yes. Yes. Nothing. Very, really, very I couldn't Snyder ish. Really figure out what in the world am I looking at? Like, I would, I would have loved it more if they would have brightened things up a little bit. I think I would I have think, been like, oh, okay, I can see what's going on. I, I see it. He, when I see it here, it's kind of, I'm like, wait, what? Who, who's that? Oh, wait, wait, that's an Easter egg, but I can't, I can't, I can't see. It. Is that Deathstroke? Is that Deadpool? Well, and that's like, the problem I ran into when I was doing the stills for the show tonight was finding a still that wasn't blurred is off bloody hell was just it also seems very low res too like impossible. I, do, I see what you're saying and maybe the bit rate the way the person uploaded it for whatever reason but it seems like it does seem very like low res like i'm like what, what am right I i'm sure at? if i would have had a better resolution it would have looked better but anyway matt was gonna I, say something i think it was matt yeah well, um, i i do like i think that because i'm still trying to finish the book by ernest klein because this is based on a book and uh he does he does say he draws a lot of uh willy wonka like he did a lot, or uh, he draw a lot of this from uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory a bit. So I'm guessing that this has to do more so with the uh, the whole uh, like uh, like five people go in, one person come out kind of mentality, I guess, where you win the game or something. So maybe that's it. And if that's the case, I feel like this is Spy Kids three <laughs> game over. Or something. Well, with much better effects. Let's be real, Spy Kids. Well, so yeah, let's be yeah. honest. Oh, actually, boy. this is kind of trying to go for that Hunger Games crowd. I believe so. Okay. It's, it's I have a for feeling the gamer crowd too, which I'm a proud yeah. member of. So, right. yeah, I, yeah. I have a feeling though that what's going to happen, and this is going to be the last bit I'm going to say about this, is that if if this underperforms, which I think it will, Spielberg. Remember, Spielberg was saying he was he was saying, oh well, the superhero genre, blah blah blah. Eventually, it's going to go the way to the western event because this is probably this is coming out next year, right? And um. This is going to be. There's a couple big Marvel movies lined up. He's going to go right back to blaming, scapegoating uh, Marvel and DC and the superhero genre, and I I think it's kind of sad. <laughs> I think here's, yeah, here's a like guy. Spiel, who... Spielberg is is going to be his heyday. I'm sorry to interrupt, uh, Rob, but I just I just want to interject. Like it's the same thing. Same thing we saw with Luke Besson, where he's like, oh well, that that uh, that uh, I don't know. Why I have a, a southern accent. Well, that um. 
So yeah, I think he's like Christopher Nolan guy, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, that Christopher Nolan, you know, he's not so hot. Yeah, you know, no, 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 you know, French, you know. No, no. I gotta sound no? like the guy from uh, Star Wars, <laughs> that like racist Jewish stereotype. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> anybody oh, else got anything to fucking say about Ready Player One? Because I'm, I like, Don't I have me. zero interest in it. <laughs> please, <laughs> please, please don't be pixels. Please don't be pixels. I seen somebody <laughs> pointed that out on Targer, <laughs> Taggart MC said, "This feels more like pix- more serious pixels to me," and he's got a <laughs> point there. That's. That's sad. Anyway, Pixel so. Player One or something like that. <laughs> Moving on. Here we go. Yeah, Moving right. well, on. Let's just, keep, let's just go on here. Let's talk about some good things. Let's talk about some Thor. Yeah. Oh, my God. Was oh, this yeah. Thor trailer. To Thor me, it was better. The show. It, it blew just like out of the water. We're going to get into... We're gonna get into we, I think we should tr- address the leaked uh, footage for Infinity War, really which blew my mind. I had I didn't watch it because all the videos out there were giving me a kink in my neck when I was no, trying no, no. to watch I, it. So I, I saw I the whole thing several times. I'm telling you guys, if you guys have not seen the leaked trailer, see it while you can. I'll wait for the legit oh, one on Jimmy Kimmel. Oh my god. <laughs> you have no idea. You don't have a clue. You don't have an inkling of how amazing this movie is going to be. Oh, it's going to be so I'm good. glad to hear you say that, Beyond, because Ooh. this tells me one thing. Sandy at San Diego Comic Con, even after having D twenty three last weekend, Marvel stole the show. And not only that, they didn't even have to pull the ace out yet. Yes. <laughs> They're like, oh here, just have this. This is the Jack to go up against uh what WB just brought out there. Take a look. You know, yeah. and that blew blew away the competition. And anybody who wants to argue that, there is proof out there that it topped social media and other things going down and I'm sure we could look at the trailer count and everything like that to compare. Yeah, I mean Justice League did considerably well, but right. I, I well, think we'll that's mostly that, mostly curiosity. Yeah. We'll get into that a little bit later, but just talking about specifically Thor, again, Infinity War is going to be, I think the greatest Marvel movie ever made, or one of them one of the top three, and it's going to make so much money it's going to make so, I don't care if it's going to be three hours or four hours long, I don't care. It might be like, the fr- that, that two billion it might be the highest grossing film it's of all time if it actually if it actually delivers. Oh my god. But yeah, so it's, so what are yeah. what is everybody's thoughts then on Thor the trailer then overall? Go ahead <laughs> first, Rob, because you kinda been quiet. Yeah, I thought it was I thought it was awesome. I, I thought it really was. I mean, um Um it, I mean, really, I mean the the scene where he's sitting with the Hulk. <laughs> and, Hulk like, and the Hulk, fire. Hulk like raising fire and uh, <laughs> Thor is like uh s- smoldering <laughs> fire. <laughs> Yeah, that was great. I love that, that. I'm glad Hulk is able to control himself enough where he's able to speak now, which is something I've been waiting for for all, so many movies. I'm like, when is Hulk going to speak? I can't wait until Bruce Spanner and Hulk become one, and they're just like interchangeable. And I love the voice. I no, love the, the voice. The voice was and spot it gives, on perfect. It, it gives the Hulk an extra dimension now, too. He's not just a mindless brute. Exactly. And it actually gives you like, okay, we, I hope he shows up more in other movies even more so now because I was always one of the few people who are like yay Hulk I love Hulk he's always kind of my one of my ones I always liked a lot more in this universe and then I'm glad to see him kind of get more of a character like you said because now well, hopefully he'll yeah. be in it more one of the things is I, I noticed this is actually a really this looks like a really different style of Marvel movie that's what I was going to say it's like it, you it's not it doesn't seem that serious like from from the trailer standpoint like this looks like a like almost Guardians like well I was going like, to say it is a bridge to to the I, Infinity War I call it Guardians right. and the Thor yeah. and you notice how in, in the Infinity War trailer just to go back to that he lands literally lands on the ship it's almost like a callback to the original Avengers movie where Thor comes into the Avengers film on on the top of the actual uh, ship or whatever the, the the plane or whatever and he's like you know there are the lightning Winchet, yeah. you know coming into the coming into play with the story and in the trailer the leak trailer is kind of a reversal of that where he's coming in and bringing in the guardians and coming into play but in this reversal way where he's like all like for whatever reason I guess it has to do with the Ragnarok he's like he's out he's um is incapacitated he's knocked out for a reason and then Mantis basically revives him and he's like oh my god who are you people what's going on here and then that's when they start the actual Infinity War trailer but the reason why I mention that is like they're showing how Marvel is finally and I call this basically 
Jack Kirby porn. This movie is basically Jack, and I love that because oh, yes. they're finally embracing Marvel's zany weirdness, trippy, you know, seventies or like the seventies era where everyone was just on all types of of drugs and substances, and and <laughs> that's how they made that good crap back in the day. And we're seeing that now, where and even Taika Waititi, the director, in an interview, he was like. You know, yeah, I'm basically, he's, I'm paraphrasing, he, he's basically said, I'm soft rebooting, rebooting Thor. The other two movies weren't that good. They took Thor too seriously. I'm going to give Thor a true character. I'm going to let Chris Hemsworth go to town. He can be as comedic as he wants to be, but still keeping the core of the character. And we're seeing that here. And the music, it's like some 80s inspired flair. I mean, you literally can take this. A lot of late 70s, 80s. You look, yeah. yeah, you can literally take yes. this trailer right here. And compile it and edit it in After Effects. Make it look like it came from a VHS. And you want to really be able to tell the difference. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I really love that because Outside it feels of like... some of the effects, yeah. But no, it's... And that's a good point you brought up too is like... Here's the thing we were saying in the uh, podcast I just put up earlier about superhero fatigue. Is that Marvel is the only one in the game that's really found the the true key to this and that is treating it like westerns even though spielberg said it will go the way of the westerns westerns could still be relevant if they were able to find, continue to find decent stories to tell and superheroes are just so chock full of shit they'll be able to draw from it for, for, for way past our death but that's the thing is marvel's cracked the code and that is make every movie different yeah it's different than the last one it doesn't matter if it's a sequel to another one of the movies they're still different look at perfect examples captain america winter soldier the first oh movie God. compared to winter soldier oh compared to God. civil war all three are very very extremely different films within the same trilogy let alone universe and not only that almost every single marvel movie feels different from the last well, two even so though they still feel connected i want to interject a little bit there are a few marvel movies that became very formulaic <clears throat> I think one of them is, even though I enjoyed Doctor Strange, I thought it came, it became a little formulaic and it was very predictable. Even though the effects were stellar and amazing, and I think visually it was it was very great. Um, I'm also thinking of uh, Age of Ultron, was made almost as much money as the first Avengers film, but I feel like it would have made a heck of a lot more if they would have really made it a bit darker, like Empire Strikes Back, like really played up Ultron, not right. kill and him I at think the that's end, not interject all the these Ultron, setups right. for in Infinity War and then have the movie slow down and have Thor, oh, I'm inside the water, oh, I'm getting a vision, oh, I see, I see something, it's, it's, it's the Infinity Stones and, you know, all that stuff where it kind of really <clears throat> took away from the main plot of the film and Again, it felt like even Iron Man 2 suffered from that, where they wanted right. to set up so much stuff to come. And, of course, Marvel has fixed that. Most of their films, I mean, to me, Marvel has about a 90%, maybe 88% success rate to me, overall. I agree. Yeah, pretty much. And, what and did you great. think of the, So then what did you think of the trailer, Matt? Because we haven't really heard from you. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, yeah. Little bit. Oh, good lord! I love this trailer. Like, it, <laughs> like I, I can't, I can't get past the fact that, like, it makes me squee like a schoolgirl. I'm like, yeah, it's like, yeah, this, <laughs> this is something I want. This is something I want. Like, when you're bouncing in, when you're bouncing in the in the cinema seats, and you're scaring the people around you, you know you got a good movie coming your way. Like, it, it, it's this is Marvel having fun. This is Marvel like having a good time with uh with what they're putting out. It's like, oh, like. Justice, or not Justice League, DCEU, look at what they're doing. Have fun. Yeah, this is this is the same thing I felt when I seen the first, the, the teaser trailer. I, like, squealed like a little girl. And this one even more so, especially when we got to the end with Hulk. Um, I, I, I'm just, I love the idea of this. I totally want to just see this movie now. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I, hear, I think this is going to be one of the greatest Marvel movies to date. I also think this movie is going to be much better than Justice League. I, I still think Justice League is going to be a mess. Oh, we'll see one thing. For those who are listening, I'm not that big of a fan of Wonder Woman. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I really think the film is an over, overrated, pretentious movie. Anyway. And we'll get more into this in a little bit. But, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. but, but I wanted to say this where I think there's a chance that Justice League still may be a disaster where I'll give it the Wonder Woman was a success, but I think Justice League is going to take it two steps back. But it's, of course, we'll get that that's a little bit. But I think Thor Ragnarok is going to be the first Thor movie to really be a massive critical and financial and fans you know, universal success. Yeah, I I, I mean the before, slow I motion shots, right, the slow motion yeah. shots we see Hela and she's like looking at the at all of the the, the unicorn flying unicorns. I mean, well, not the, the Pegasus. <laughs> no, the Pegasus is not unicorn. Pegasus, right? 
the white pegasus yes. i think pegasi, so however how you say it you know <laughs> yeah. and you see tessa Plural. thompson on one of them oh my god the movie looks like it's it, it's almost like they're embracing more of the the, 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 the the mythology more than even the previous two thor films are where again like one of the things i didn't like about the previous two ones were like well, what you call a uh, 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 science is just another version of it. And now they're like, no, this is fantasy. This is crazy, zany gods fighting each other. Let's have fun. Forget all, well, the, smart, all the, the jargon and the, oh, well, the science and the magic are intertwined. And we don't give a crap. The nine realms. <laughs> well, <it's, laughs> let, let, me, let me go on a paper and teach you the nine realms, okay? Here, Jane, listen closely, okay? So, you see here, <laughs> it's like no, remember, one, <laughs> no one cares. Remember South, we remember might South get Park? to this in Infinity War. Let mind you, we might get to this in Infinity War. I swear. Remember South Park? These are the nine realms, and this here is the Green Lantern planet. Nobody cares about that. No one cares. About, <laughs> no one cares about the Green Lantern. But, the, but yeah, it seems like what they've done actually uh, isn't this movie going to take in, take place entirely uh, on Asgard? And Asgard? Most, no, I, I think most of it, it is. Uh, well, I think Asgard gets destroyed, and then he goes into space, and then he winds up on different planets. And yeah, stuff. well, that's whole... yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I, I don't know. But there's I don't know if you guys have, have heard this, but actually there seems to be two Easter eggs uh, on the totem. Uh, there is supposedly a man thing. Easter egg on that giant totem in the middle of Asgard, and a Beta Ray Bill Easter egg. Ooh, uh, someone uh, put it in the was it? I think it was way back in the comments. Uh, the uh, the Broken Pixel Gaming put that uh, there is a Fantastic Four comic in this one where there it's uh, in the viewing area of the arena behind Loki. Ooh, so, so I, it could be. Uh, I, I like it when Marvel Studios does this, especially towards Fox, because screw Fox. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, the <clears throat> okay. Well. Ooh, okay. Well. Okay. All right. Well, well let's move. Let's... It, they want that a escalated babies. quickly. <laughs> they, want, they want a Muppet Babies, the Fantastic Four, so they can go screw themselves. Oh, so, that. that yeah. Thing, oh, well, let's not. We'll even get go into there. that that's a little a bit more in a different show thing. altogether. Well, yeah, well, that's another. Yeah. Yeah. Can I yeah. say one thing, gentlemen? And this Absolutely. is this is very uh, gentleman oriented question for you. That was like six things, but go ahead. <laughs> So, uh, what do you guys think about the uh, the villain of the movie? Uh, Hell, awesome. Huh? Oh, yes. uh, she looks kind of hot. It's Lady Death, she, isn't it? She Come looks. On, I, let's I, be honest. I, I, I must. I must say, I, this I, is Lady Death, is it not? It, it's late. No, it's uh. The, the, she, yeah. W w what do you mean? Lady Death, the one that Thanos is obsessed with. Am I wrong? Yeah. Does everybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I know. Think, yeah. yeah. So yeah. this is going to completely lead into Infinity War is what I was getting at. I think because, it might. Yeah. I think you're right. I think that's, that's I, really she exciting. Said, either somebody says something or she says something in the... And I am i can't believe I forgot it now. But somebody says something in the trailer about death following her wherever she goes. <laughs> Pardon me, guys. Uh, that, that, isn't it something where uh, 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 Black Widow says that? Is a death I think uh, Mantis death follows said that. With Thanos I, think, I saw like the that? trailer. I think Mantis is the one that said that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Neil, like Neil comments, he's like, this makes me sad. The right. the tone of Ragnarok is exactly what uh, Fantastic Four should be. And I agree. Because this is this is what they're On supposed 60s. to do. Yeah, psychedelic-ish. Right. You know, that's the only... If I saw... If I actually saw... Mar not to get too off course, but if I saw Marvel bringing Fantastic Four into their even semi-close to the universe, they're going to do it as a period piece. They're going to put it way out. And we're going to have a young and an old version of, like, say, like... Uh. In a I way, mean, they, because they, they're, they're they're okay with their X Men stuff, and I'm not, I don't bash like I'm not bashing Fox outright. I'm bashing them because they can't. They, they seem to think that they can do things with Fantastic Four, and they can't. The X Men, mm, no. I think that the, the X Men, I seem they seem to get their they they go up and down. They go hot or they either go cold. I'm not bashing Deadpool, and I'm certainly not bashing Logan. But good lord, like just call it quits when you when you've had a dud. Well, they because were trying that... to get it in that same tone in Universe's X-Men, and I think that was one yes. of the film's biggest issues, and that's what I'm going to get on, because we're going to have a Fantastic Four show coming up. Whether it's going to be for this channel or Midnight's Edge, I cannot say yet, but yeah. Anyway, that's in the cards. Go ahead, guys, and let's finish up that on Thor and move on to yeah, the let's, let's Yeah, okay. let's finish it up on Thor right now, because I want to make sure we get everything we have to do in our hour and 30 minutes special, approximately. Uh, of course, we can go over. Of course, I'm, need to. I'm good on Thor. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so good. I think I think we pretty much a uh, fangirl. I'm a little Thor, Thor as it is. So yeah. mm. but I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm Thor'd out now. That's a terrible joke. Anyway, so moving uh, on, uh, we're gonna move right along to Justice League. Well, if you had to deal with Hulk all the time, you'd be Thor too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
so <laughs> the, the Justice League trailer dropped at Comic Con, and I'll start us off since I'm, I'm you know kind of bringing us into this segment, and I'll say this. I like the fact that most of it looked like it's shot in IMAX. I I you know I know Joss Whedon went in there and put some color in it. That's good. Brightened it up a little bit. I can actually see what's going on. <laughs> I saw that he went into the effects room and said, "You know what? Instead of having the sky be all about like this, like thunderstorms and and we're talking about th- talking about Thor, you know, thunderstorms gray everywhere. It's gray. Blue. I can't see anything. Wow. Then, you notice how they turned the sky fire. red, so it actually looks a little more colorful, more stylish. Is it that picture right there with stylized, you see Aquaman? Yeah. You see it's it's very stylized, essentially. Yes." But you can definitely tell, and, and, and of course, you know, as we know now, that it's basically a Joss Whedon and Jack Snyder movie. But it's really mostly a Joss Whedon movie. Let's be clear about that. It's mostly Joss Whedon. Anyway, <laughs> so I think this movie is either going to be a decent movie or it's going to be a hot freaking mess. I really feel that way. I think I there's a lot of good mess. things that Joss Whedon is going to try to save this movie. But um, <laughs> I guess out of a funny. Funny thing. Uh, have you guys ever thought I uh, saw this movie Dougal before? This yes. old animated I film. haven't seen it, but I, <laughs> I remember this. <laughs> oh, oh I well, that movie, there's a big story behind that. I know that, uh, I think Butch Hartman, he's an animator. He did, he did, he did some shows oh, for Nickelodeon. Fairly and he, odd, he did, right, Fairly, fairly Odd Parents and all that stuff. So, right, so he was appointed essentially to fix the movie because there were so many mm. problems with it. And essentially uh, this one guy came up to him and he was like, so about uh, so uh, uh, Butch Hartman about uh, Dougal, and he's like, you know, they brought me on to it, and I, 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 I could save it, no, I, I could do it, and I feel like perhaps maybe this is the same thing we're seeing with with Just League, possibly. This film may end up being fantastic, and I'm not negating that, but there yeah. may be a thing where Joss Whedon is like, man, I tried to fix this movie because I heard another thing where the the reshoots have been really extensive to the point where it's really. Chime, affecting the actor's schedules, where they're really, really, you know, you know, biting their teeth on trying to get everything. Well, not together. only that, they just a story come out today, and not to disrupt you, no but problem. go right ahead. I know interrupt you, but disrupt at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what I meant. I, I said that on purpose, just to be punny or funny or whatever. Anyway, uh, oh, shit. get on with it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> there was a story that came out today about they're having to remove Henry Cavill's fucking mustache. <laughs> Because <laughs> he's evidently got a fucking mustache for some other part. And oh my God, I'm sorry, but you know what? This just so goes to show, and I'm sorry to people like Amethyst and other people that I've debated this with before. This fucking movie is getting redone from top to fucking Tip bottom. Top like, to bottom. That's what's except happening. For, except for a few <laughs> things God. that they could work in there. You'll notice them probably when we get into the movie because it'll be a bunch of slow-mo shots and other bullshit. Oh, not the slow-mo. And dark, dark scenes. Like, Because they even lightened up. You can tell they even lightened up some of the oh, scenes Josh from the Wien first trailer. Yeah, trying his darnest to save this movie, I can tell. Oh, yeah. oh, I can tell. Take- even Batman's a change. even Batman's a nice little shade of blue. He's not as black anymore. If that makes any <laughs> sense. <laughs> well, I'm well, gonna tell you right up front. Outside of some of the some of the shit that was still carried over, and some of the shit that you can tell is definitely carried over yet from the Snyder verse, whether it was by choice or by force. I'm actually interested in this movie now. This trailer looked good. I even chuckled at some of the flashes. I, I did. I did. He's show. like. He's like. Well, uh, it seems like everyone just left you. That's uh. That's rude. And he just, he just goes off. That was like, that, that got me, I laughed out loud at that. That was hilarious. It's my problem with my, because like, I'm still trying to find my, my if, if anything, to like about this film. Because I every time I see Ezra Miller as the, as the Flash, I'm like, oh, look, it's it's Tom Holland. It, it, oh. It's Spider-Man. You had to try oh, hard looking, to make okay. him like the Tom Holland Oh, look, it's universe. not Grant Gustin. <laughs> yeah, yes. Thank you. Thank you. He was better. Put him in. Why is he not in this? Oh, we're doing different universe. TV different universe. But, yes, yeah. on the other side of that, I agreed with Matt. Though they're trying to do the Spider-Man thing with him. Oh, they are. You this know is they all are. a direct re- reaction to both Civil War and what they seen at first in Spider-Man: Homecoming while they were making this. Right, and here's one thing I'll say too. It, it, this is uh, this is interesting. Notice how nuanced and very almost subliminal they cut this trailer together. The first beginning of the trailer was that you know the dun dun da, 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 you know the the Beatles were coming together. Yeah. And then it changed together, yeah. into this more orchestraic type of trailer, which is something you would see from Joss Whedon, which is basically saying, okay, this is where it started. This is Zack Snyder's vision, but 
we're slowly changing it into a, a Joss Whedon movie. And you can clearly see that. It still has the aesthetic of a Snyder movie in some respects with the character designs and all that. But again, like you said, Tom, I know you get on Zach for this all the time. There's so... And I have to reiterate, there's, there's actually color. I can see what's going on. I'm so excited. I, <laughs> I'm not going to go uh, into, into, into a Zack Snyder... There. I don't have to go into a Zack Snyder <laughs> film with a bunch of LED lights and flash it at the screen trying to understand what's going on. It's like, I finally... Oh, I can see now. I get it. Okay. We can actually enjoy a movie and actually understand what's going on. And I, again, I hope that Joss can try his darndest to make this a cohesive story because let's be, I, I know a lot of people say Batman v Superman was such a good movie. And it's like, it's like, uh, it's like the, the, no, the, 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 the it's like Hitchcockian and, and, and all this. I'm like, no, no it it's wasn't. Not. No, it's not. It's a pretentious mess with a bunch of scenes and things happen just to happen. And okay. Superman is not even in the movie barely. But anyway, getting back to Justice League, I hope yeah. to God that they try to make this movie right. I hope that God, Joss Whedon gets it right. Well, there was some more news that come out today, and I got to touch on this because it explicitly ties into the very first Midnight's Edge podcast that we did with Andre and Rob the other day. And it come out today that there were some photos that were seen at Comic-Con. Right. That lead us to believe that Batman might die in Justice League. And the reason that is, is the one I'm not even going to give any, because I, I know what the other one is. The one is him, Batman's next to a casket or whatever. Well, that was because of Superman's casket and they're getting him undug and they're getting him ready and rejuvenating him or whatever. And that's that scene you see at the end of the trailer where Alfred's like, oh, hopefully you're not too late. You know, and shit like that. I think it might were, be Green Lantern, though. That's what I think. It could be, too, but I think it's Superman because Superman's what? in it. There's there's more than What? what? <laughs> Superman's not dead? I dead? No. Who would have guessed? Anyway. guessed the dirt? The dirt? What did the dirt mean? <laughs> the supposed... <laughs> The supposed picture, though, that really puts this, or it was either a clip or a picture, I can't recall now, sorry, somebody out there could probably correct me in the uh, message. Put it in the comments, put it in the comments. Yeah, um, <laughs> but uh, it had Superman floating over four members of the league in jeans only, looking pissed as fuck, and the only one not there is Batman. Are we sure this isn't a Levi's jeans commercial? It could be. <laughs> I, think they're, I think they're trying to call back to like the new version of Superman where he just has the Superman logo, black shirt, and the jeans. He's just like, hey, guys, you know, I'm I, sorry. I forgot yeah. to put on my suit, so I, let me put on some Levi jeans. And he looks at the camera like Wayne's World, like, you know, just advertising it. You can see the, the telemarketing <laughs> logos come Well, because after that, po- we, we just barely got that podcast up at the same time that Ben Affleck, of course, made his – Announcement that uh, I'm definitely going to be Batman from here on out. I'm not going anywhere, blah, 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 blah. Just like he was definitely directing, you know, a week before he dropped out of that, too. So I think he's just paying lip service right now. I think he's just trying to get ahead of the news because I will believe the media over Ben Affleck any day because he has lied to us so many times before. <laughs> I that love Batman it. movie's coming out pretty and, soon, guys. Yeah. And Ben Affleck just looks <laughs> so, like, downtrodden in every single so, yeah. interview. Like yeah, I'm starting to think he wants out. Well, I think there's yeah, I think there's weight to that, and I think that's true. I think they're gonna kill Bruce Wayne's Batman in this movie, and they're gonna reboot oh, it somehow. Well, Flashpoint, well, because that's Flash the other big announcement yeah. that everybody made a big deal out of, but it's not a big fucking deal since no. day one when they announced back in 2013 or 14 that they were gonna do a Flash film. It's been Flashpoint because anybody who's watched the TV series knows that the TV series started out doing the Flashpoint plot, and then they had to kind of change it up a little bit because WB announced that that was gonna be the main storyline for Flash way back then. So then damn now, it, Barry. Not, yeah, damn it, Barry. So this God, isn't new news. Damn it. And there's already rumors that um, what's his face who played uh, uh, Thomas Wayne in in uh, Batman v Superman? Oh, God, damn, what's his name? Um, He's not, Morgan, I think is his last name. He's on Harry uh, Morgan. No. <laughs> Yeah, Harry Morgan's the guy from Mash, <laughs> and he's dead. No, so. he's he's was in Watchmen, and he's in uh, oh, the uh, comedian guy, right? Dead. Oh, yeah. Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Neil Ganty. Jeffrey Thank Dean you. Morgan. I was right. Morgan is his last name. So he's already uh, been supposedly rumored to be spotted in a Batman suit, or at least being there's supposedly somebody sa- said something about some concept art for him. What, what of course, was the if name you're, again? Run a name by me again. Jeffrey Dean Morgan. He played Thomas Wayne in 
um, BBS. In BBS, and and then the mothers, of course. If anybody knows the story of Flashpoint, yeah, I think I think they may be doing that. That because it's a possibility. I'm kind of thinking in my head too. I saw well, a couple things about that too online. Something about his mother being the Joker as well, which is also a plot line in Flashpoint as well. So anyway, well, it gives him the opportunity to reboot the character and to recast the character because then you know, after spoilers, after everything gets set right, then you can just have a another actor take over as Batman. Right, Barry. Barry, we this is a Warner Brother exec, by the way. Barry, we uh, we kind of screwed up on this uh, this uh, this Batman casting. Uh, we need you to fix it. Fix it, Barry. We need to go back. We need to we need to get a better Bruce Wayne, a Wayne that everyone can get behind, not a Wayne that can make a Batman script and completely flub it out and have problems outside of the camera okay. world. Okay, okay, we <laughs> we've got a Wayne everybody can get behind. It's Wayne Brady. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> But um, like let me let me get on one thing that I I really want to establish is for for my my opinion on this is that this should have been the movie to start everything because they seem to be going all over the place. This feels so like and I know it's I fe it feels so Avengers where you gotta get every little piece of each character. I'm like why why do we need to have this? It looks like we're gonna get a lot of Wonder Woman story. From this trailer and uh, oh yeah, there's like she's in the trailer at least sixty or seventy percent compared to the rest. I, and I for all to, we know, they, I don't know how to do it, a diagram, it, but yeah, uh, right. they I'm, I'm worried about that. I'm a little worried because I just hope because they they make it even instead of one way if that makes sense. If you guys see where I'm coming from in that yes. regard. <laughs> Well, like, well, I don't like. I it could be that they edited it because Wonder Woman came is is still pretty hot right. out there. Yeah. Okay, I know how to say this and not sound like a fucking moron. That she had about ten percent more screen time in the trailer than everybody else, and a uh, hundred and ten percent more than Superman. Yeah, and what what's weird is that um Aquaman Aquaman feels more Thor than she does now. Where you know that was that because that was the one thing I didn't like about uh, Wonder Woman is that we got to make this feel like Thor because uh, Patty Jenkins. Thank apparently... you. Somebody else got that too. I said that Patty, a long time ago. It's like Patty they're trying Jenkins to. Came Thor. It's basically Thor, Thor and Captain America mixed together, and I'm like, I've seen yes. this before. This is nothing new. Like and now you got Aquaman. Like Aquaman, like he's having some quips. He's having some jokes. I'm like that's Thor. He's going ha ha. Here we go. Let's say, ha ha. Here thing. we go. Now the only difference is that he's a surfer, dude. Ooh yeah, brother. I'm the surfer guy. Aquaman. And cool. the sad part is, guess where they oh, stole yeah. that from? Can uh, anybody kind of Macho Man Savage? Good old Smallville yeah. was the first time I seen oh. Aquaman as a surfer, dude. <laughs> and oh. I can't believe they continued on with it. I mean, I'm sure they did it before that in the comics. Oh. Don't get me wrong, but. <laughs> Well, they, you gotta get away from Aquaman, the blonde, squeaky queen, squeaky, right. squeaky clean, blonde hair, blue eyed Aquaman. He's like, hi, you know, I'm because... the guy that talks to fish. Uh, can I help you guys, uh, Justice League? He's like, no, just, exactly. just stay, stay the at whole, the headquarters. You don't need to do the whole, like, stay the whole right family there. guy. Like, uh, Aquaman's a pussy. I'm, you know? like, I'm, like, I'm tired of being abused on on robot <laughs> chicken all the time. Someone <laughs> tell Seth Green to just stop it and leave me alone. <laughs> hey, hey, you're lucky you're doing that over there. Like, if you're in this water, man, I I totally get you. But <laughs> they even have they even have something where what is it? Aquaman's on the verge of suicide. He's got a bomb around his belt. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. You're not gonna do it. <laughs> it's like no, I, I'm going to do it. I promise, I'm going to do well, it. I did a I worked on a show way back called a Fanimation, which is a lot like Robot Robot Chicken, and that's why I didn't go anywhere. So like the one joke we had on there though was a whole episode going through it. It was the Super Friends version of them. And Aquaman's like, Can I help you guys? Can I please please? And they're like, No, no, why don't you just go do this and go do that? We'll find something for you to do later, blah, 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 blah. And he's like trying to figure out he's like gonna quit and everything. And they're like, You can't fucking quit. Yeah. We can't all be superheroes. We gotta have some super friends. It is called super friends, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, anyway, Aquaman. so then it goes out, and then of course the end of the joke is at the end of they're like, no, no, we don't need you, or whatever. And then you cut to the end, and it's Batman, you know, up to his neck in water, and he's like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, so anyway, all let's, right, let's, let's segue let's ourselves along. into the last story of the day, along. gentlemen. You guys ready for this? You guys ready? No, no, you know. Well, and no. nobody's yeah, gonna I, know. I'm gonna, I'm, say about jail. It's, it's, it's time. Well, I, I, I think you guys here. Here's what I want to say. I think you guys need to discover uh, some uh, fortitude to get through this next segment here. Oh, you no, guys get what I'm implying right here. So, uh, leave it in the booth. here we go. It, it, it's here. It, it's looping. 
There, there we have a. Uh, oh, there's that good fellow over there. <laughs> this is gonna suck so hard. This is gonna Rob. be so bad. This is gonna suck. So Rob, so um, this is gonna be. So I, this is gonna suck. I, I, I just gotta ask you. <laughs> just gotta ask you. Uh, uh, <laughs> what'd you think of this clusterfuck? <laughs> I, well, I paused my video right. feed. I, I, I'm assuming we're talking about Discovery or Inhumans. Yes. Well, Headphone yes, warning. Talking about Discovery. Headphone warning. Headphone warning. <laughs> uh, well, like I said, we're, we're talking about we're talking about Discovery, right? I mean, that's of that's mm-hmm. yeah. Well, I, I have a question. Oh no! Now, a, a spaceship is an artificially controlled environment, right? Right. Why do you have open flame burning up the oxygen? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Everybody might want to turn your shit down out there. I forgot the pre-warning. I, I said headphone warning, so... <laughs> yeah, you did. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. You should have... I, I saw some spikes coming yeah, in. Now. I see some spikes. That was what I was getting to, and I forgot. <laughs> turn down your volume, guys. Okay, continue, Rob. <laughs> oh, for Christ's sake. I, have, I do have to give it up to him. That is the best Mass Effect trailer I have ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and drop the mic. <laughs> Krieger, out! <laughs> but, <laughs> dear God. Just just when I think I, I've seen it all, I mean, and like, you know, it's, it, it's all the same shit that they're it's all the same focus group driven shit that I I hated about the first trailer. I mean, and you got and you got the the stupid cover song. That that song is actually a song by a group called Ten Years After, which was a blues rock band from uh, from the UK back in the sixties. Yeah, I like the uh, original. Uh, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. For those who don't know, and it's just like the same moody kind of the slow version of that song. And I just. Give me a fucking Star Trek sh- series, please. Nothing about this screams, I, oh, you must watch me or your life is not complete. Well, if your life's not complete, then if you don't watch Star Trek, then, you know, you, sh- you know, seek medical attention. But anyway, um, it's, I, 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 I am beside myself, guys. I really am. I, and I, and I did subject myself to watching the panel, actually, the Comic Con panel. They really don't didn't talk about the show a whole lot. I mean, they talked about elements of the show, but they didn't talk anything about the plot. Oh, they, I, mean, I wonder why that is. <laughs> yeah. You just know you're in trouble. <laughs> and I mean, they're just all so. Oh, I'm so excited to be part of this. This is so great. It's so oh, standard. It's, a, it's a standard procedure when you know something's about to be a disaster. You can start to deflect, 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 deflect. deflect. There should be a yeah, meme exactly. on this channel. <laughs> rap, deflect. Rap. Turn, deflect shields on. Engaged. Deflect fields are engaged. Deflect any questions <laughs> about the show. They don't. We don't want them to know that's a disaster. They can't know. And in CBS All Access, this is going to be a nine dollar a month subscription, right? Yeah. yeah my, I mean, my 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 my. Buying? Okay, guys. Like here's what I'm gonna tell you. You want to know how you cheat this? You wait till you know the show's done, then you get it the last month so you can watch them all at once. <laughs> at one time, that's at one a, month, that's a good, and say, that's fuck you, point. CBS. And hopefully they got a one-month free subscription pr- trial oh, package, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. yeah. 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 And Night's Edge does yeah. not condone the act. Is that were just said by Thomas Connors. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Well, <laughs> oh, can I say one? Can I say one thing? Can I say one thing? I, I want to interject a little bit. Okay. So, so basically, yeah. I, I'll, I'll say this: is there's a lot of lens flares in this trailer, <laughs> which is um, oh, so boy. something. Um, I will say this also too: the the quality of the of it itself, I will say this, does look very, very amazing for a TV show. Oh. This is some of the best I've seen. I mean, this looks like. Almost movie quality, not quite there, but again, for a TV show, this is some of the best. Out for there. what, three and a half, six, seven years now? Yeah, and know, it's a so shame bad. because it looks like absolute. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I will give, I will give it up to him. The visuals are amazing. Unfortunately, I, it, <laughs> well, let's go back to Valerian. How much did the visuals help that? Not, not much. a darn bit. And here's the thing, too. Okay, I think there is a mix of a lot of things. Okay, I think there is a lot of shoehorned. Changes. I think there is a little bit of we, I, social I, I, justice. <laughs> yeah, well, heavy, heavy on that. Where I do think there's a lot of this shoehorn gender politics in it, which seems very forced to me, and it doesn't seem natural to me. This just seems so like, 
oh my god, there needs to be a, a, a black female character, you know, even though I'm black. It's just the idea that it needs to be so forced down your throats and to the point where nothing feels real anymore, despite the fact that you had a female uh, lead uh, back well, way back in the day that felt more right. like, oh, this is just a character or whatever. And said, like I was talking about before, talking about Ghostbusters, where they had to turn to the camera, I'm an empowered woman and you have to respect my position. And, and get, over <laughs> get over it, right? <laughs> You know, get over you know, it. Not only that, okay, just, beyond the fact on, just, that... Just, just for Joseph Solano, yes, that is Rain Wilson, and he actually hosted the... the he moderated the Comic-Con panel. Uh, Rain oh. Wilson is actually going to play, be playing Harry Mudd. Oh. Sad. That sounds like a dumb name, but anyway, keep going. I think I remember well, no, that, that's when, that goes back to the original series. Yeah, though. he's a character from the like original Rain series. I do like Rain Wilson, too. I Me, do. too. I used to. No, I'm just kidding. No, I like it. <laughs> um, well, but, I'm sorry to cut you off, Tom. Go ahead. No, no, you're fine. I was just going to say... Um, Fuck, what was I going to say? <laughs> no, I know what I was going to say now. Okay. There's no clarity as to what timeline this is, and we had talked about this, I believe, off the air, right, Rob? And yeah. I know we're privy to a few things we're not supposed to talk about, and one of these things I hope is not this that I'm going to bring up now. Isn't Netflix in the process of suing them right now because this is not what they ordered? I have read there is there is some, some, some kind of litigation. Um... I'm not entirely clear on the details, but... Um, but yeah, for our, our, our out-of-the-United-States listeners, this show will be on Netflix for you guys, so that's no big deal. One thing we pointed out, Rob and I did, in one of the earlier podcasts when we were well, still... We're, well, like I said, let's we have to be careful here because... Um, right, because I'm not going to... I'm there's moving cer on. There's certain things that we're not... That we, right, right, and I'm yeah. moving on from that now. I was just going to say, I mean, <clears throat> if you're outside of the U.S., not such a big deal because you got Netflix, but like Rob and I brought up in an earlier podcast when it was still Film Buffet podcast, was that, um, I don't know how I was going to put it. <laughs> you got me off guard there, and I forgot what I was going to say now. But basically, you don't, oh yeah, you don't have to add another subscription to your already full subscription lineup of internet hulus netflix and amazon primes and all these things that you already added to and that's one thing that rob and i felt was really going to hurt this in the u.s was a lot of people are not going to want to add another service to their already growing list of services and i think that's one thing that's going to kill it here can too, i but it, can i jump ahead. on that a little bit like oh, yeah, um because there was a show that uh paul feig did and like hey, paul feig everybody let's, let's go on that again but there was a show called other space i think it was called where it was kind of star trek-ish um they had some mystery science theater 3000 alumni on board it and uh it was a yahoo it was a yahoo access kind of thing where i vaguely they, remember that yeah and, yeah uh, it, yeah it i do remember that it bombed. It bombed on there because, again, why do we need another streaming service? Why, well, why does CBS well, of all people need it? I don't because they're greedy bastards. Well, Yahoo Access was you, it, that was a free service, though. I mean, but the big problem with Yahoo Access was that not they, Yahoo. I'm talking about CBS. Sorry, I didn't mean oh, to cut so, you off. Rob. Okay, CBS well, is a bunch of greedy bastards. That's what oh, I yeah. meant. <laughs> yeah, yes, I got that. <laughs> well, CBS sees the streaming. Everybody's streaming now. Hulu, Netflix, and everything else. And they want a piece of that action. CBS is your grandpa trying to get in on shit way late in the game when they everybody else is on moved on to Twitter and Facebook. Your grandpa's still on MySpace. That's they, they, CBS. They got, they, they got the flip <laughs> phone friends. while everybody. They got the flip phone and while everybody else has the smartphone. Yeah, pretty much. But if that. But like I said, I don't like. I've said over the past year. You've made me hate The Daily Show. You've made me hate Doctor Who. And I started hating Doctor Who well before the female Doctor was cast. Oh, my God. So, uh, can I just say something you've real quick? Made... Can I say something real quick? This whole female Doctor Who thing is is utterly absurd, okay? It's just another trend in the social justice craze where, oh, we, we got to make female 007 instead of making her all, like, or we got to make a you know, female Doctor Who, the female Ghostbusters. Right. Well, that Why takes us back to the original characters. And <clears throat> right. That's what you were saying at the beginning own. of the show. Was girl was it Girls Night? Is that the name of the movie that we were oh, talking yes. about earlier? Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Perfect example. Now, here's, Do something original. People, you don't have to rip something off. Right. Well, Even like, my emoji when I covered emoji movie, just like come on, you think it's not hard? It's not hard to come up so with something original. Right. It's, no, I, I, it's not. I'm sorry, not original. It's not hard to come up with something that you can call your own. Right. Whereas emoji yeah. movie is just nothing more than a Lego movie. It's the Lego off. movie mixed with Wreck It Ralph, mixed with a couple other all these Inside other generic out, films. Herman's head, Inside Out, right? And right. Osmosis Jones, all of it. There's nothing new to this. Oh, God, Everybody's Osmosis seen Jones. the stories. 
<laughs> Good like, Lord. Oh, well, like I, like I was saying before, yeah, like I said, you've made you've made me hate The Daily Show. You've made me hate Doctor Who now. Don't make me hate Star Trek. Please don't make me hate Star Trek. I have so little in this world. I don't want to hate Star Trek, too. Right. Please. I have a and feeling I we're sure... all going to universally hate this show. Despite the good visuals. God, I'm barely holding on to Ghostbusters as it is because they keep <laughs> punching, they keep punching us bit in the back with a knife every time when they come out with something new. I and would like, say good God, more like stop. shooting you with a Barrett 50 cal at point oh, blank range. Right. <laughs> well, and, and none of us here at Midnight's Edge are um, blind to the fact that we have a lot of Star Trek fans out there that listen. And just so you guys know that are listening. Um, we are going to have a lot of Star Trek related stuff coming up, and if you want to catch a lot of the la latest news that's going on at Midnight's Edge, you can always go to Patreon, and if you go ahead and donate to us on Patreon, there's all kinds of neat stuff that's there that's exclusively there, so check that out too, and well, there's going to be some stuff that's going to be coming up there. I know Andre wanted me to talk a little bit about that too, but anyway, speaking of Star Trek and moving on then, so yeah, this looks nothing like and that's the the main consens consensus I catch across the web is this looks nothing like Star Trek. This does not feel like Star Trek, and I think it's going to have a lot of people confused and not really given two shits about it. Really, it's going to just go away fast, go and just be nothing because nobody's going to care. I mean, you're going to have a few people at first that are going to see it and they're going to tell their friends that it sucks, and I'm the only people that are probably really really going to go going to watch it are going to be Trekkies. Well, one of the big problems, actually, I noticed on Twitter is that nobody knows where to watch it. No, I mean, nobody can see the, the trailer outside the U.S. on CBS uh, All Access. I think they're going they to have to go... bury this film. Sorry to interrupt you. I think they're going to bury this film. I mean, the, the it's not TV show. Yeah. Yeah, I think but it's almost like a film. It. It's basically the way I think they filmed it, too. It was like one big movie, almost. Yeah. And even though they were yeah. going to release it week by week by week or whatever on CBS All Access and Netflix across the country i think i think i'm not even sure now what's the deal with netflix everywhere else are they getting it right away too or they got to wait they're, until it's all released and then they no, get all the episodes no they're getting it they're getting at the same time we get it from what i know and actually in canada it's going to be on space and channel z and it's okay. going to be on it's going to be on crave tv online uh who has exclusive streaming rights uh in canada and that's another thing i mean it's a giant clusterfuck of who's got right. who's got who can see it where instead of Boy. It's gonna Maybe. get pirated badly. I mean, yes, not, it to just, is. Oh, not yeah. to just oh, yeah. talk about the. Let's talk about the pink elephant in the fucking room. This movie, the or show. Sorry, now Beyond's got me calling. Yeah, because we're talking this about movies. The show is gonna show. be pirated so badly. I bet you it's gonna be. That's gonna hurt it. That's stuff. gonna hurt a lot too. That's gonna really hurt it. But I think people are gonna do it because they're in protest. Because I can see it now where people are just gonna upload on YouTube and rant about how horrible it is if it does turn out to be horrible. But nevertheless, I think we can use that to segue into our viewer question aftermath segment of the show but before i do that do you have any closing remarks on star trek discovery other than it looks like it's gonna suck uh well suck. we didn't talk about the other big elephant in the room though oh spock's mm. half sister <sighs> huh. uh, can, can we just go to viewer questions uh, now? <laughs> let's go to question. right, yeah. okay, questions. questions questions now <laughs> <laughs> now it's good questions. We're at got the questions. Said, but... We'll leave that for the Star Trek shows. Yeah, this, is the part of, this is the part of the show where we answer your questions live. I got outvoted. Okay. <laughs> no. Yeah, okay. Hey, let's see some questions, guys. What do we got? What do we got? I like um... Faye James's what a twist. <laughs> right. Faye James. Well, that's not a question, James. <laughs> well, no, I like we that, though. Just, to catch up here, but while we're waiting for them to catch up with questions here. Mike says Discovery will redefine horrible. <laughs> <laughs> It'll that's make... not quite, that's not a question either, but I like your I like the way you think, Mike. Faye James <laughs> says just make... wait. The yeah, new doctor will be a dog, a fish, or even air. I like He's what gonna... Mike I like what Mike Or a trans on. mixed race female who is <laughs> well, asexual. Nick, Neil Gatti has a question for Rob specifically. He says what did you think of Brian Singer's pitch for I believe he says Star Trek. He put it in um abbreviation. Yes. Yeah. Actually, I'm unfamiliar with Brian Singer's uh, pitch for Star Trek. I'm gonna have to educate myself on that. Um, uh, we got um, at this sorry. point anything's at this point anything's gonna be better. Uh, Marty McFly says, "What do you guys want in a modern Star Trek show?" Go ahead, Rob. Let's let's hear this one. I really do. I really. I want this. something that takes place after Voyager returns to Earth. Thank you. Yeah, and to pick right, up... I want him to pick a timeline. 
Pick a timeline yeah. and, and go for it. Stick to timeline. Any timeline. Any timeline. But stick to it. That's the difference. Marty, just pick a fucking timeline. Marty, we'll great go Scott, just pick a fucking <laughs> no, let, me let me stop. And we'll be there. Just tell us which timeline. Um, no, I just, that's, I, I, I mean, that's what I want to know is, are they going to kill the Kelvin timeline? Are we going to continue on? Is this a fucking reboot? And, of course, these are things we're going to cover later on in other shows. Don't get me wrong. But, yeah, so... What else? Does anybody think about that before um, we move into a different question? Or sorry, I didn't I, interrupt. Nope, I've got nothing. It's just like I, I agree with Rob. Like, just pick, just pick something. Pick something. Quit trying to make something and just pick something. They said it was supposed See, to come out like, from what I saw in the first trailer, that it takes place like ten years before the original trilogy the series. Uh, yeah, that's that's ten or that's twenty. Yeah. It's kind of like the thing with Ghostbusters, where it's like it takes place in the same universe as. Uh, they said it's something so ambiguous where. It's almost as if, oh, this is the next generation, like, 30 years it's later, and, and then they're saying it's in a different universe, so it's all confusing, and it, it's the same thing here, where it's like, what do you want? What are you trying doing, to do? We're doing bogus retconning, is what it feels like. Okay. It's like, right. Speaking okay, of bogus now, retconning... Oh, go ahead, okay. Ron. Uh, actually, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm ju I've just read up quickly on uh, on Brian Singer's pitch for Star Trek, Star Trek Federation. Uh, set in the year 3000, humanity has become complacent. Uh, many worlds left the Federation. Starfleet stretched too thin. Ships are outdated. A new enemy called the Scourge attacks the USS Sojourner and two colony wars. Sounds interesting. Sounds like that could be really good. Right. I like that pitch. I like that pitch. The Ferengi come, uh, become the dominant power in the galaxy. Uh, Spring, okay. Yeah, actually, this sounds really, really good. Right. This sounds well, we got... really good. I, I'd be interested in seeing this. Right. Well, we got a yeah. few other questions here. Mm -hmm. um, Dougie the Ducker says, honestly, is... is, is uh, Wait a minute. Who said... This... Oh, hold on a second. I know who that is. Let me answer that question. Dougie? I see you, Dougie the Ducker. He, he's... Uh, he's uh, what should we call it? He's... Um... He's my co-host. I run a channel with him or whatever. He's, uh, <laughs> I have a clan I'm working on or whatever, so allow me to answer this question. Let, let, me, let me see this. What did you say here, sir? Let me see. Honestly, right. He's... it's going to be the, this SQW diversity and feminist fad that's going, to, that's going to be a disappointing blimp in our history where kids are going to be looking back and say, what the F happened? And I can't agree more, you freaking duck. Uh, yes, um, <laughs> I do agree that... The social justice warrior stuff is going to completely kill and ruin and destroy our generation. I know I know this sounds really, really very like a hyperbole, but I just do not like the trend. It's like I mean, think about it. Ten years ago we would never think of trying to basically gender bend characters for a gimmick. We would say, That's stupid. Let's make, you know, interesting characters on their own and make them cool. And of course we saw with Ghostbusters and of course with Star Trek. A little less overtly is that there's this thing where, oh, the trend now is to flip the genders around and suddenly everything becomes empowering and suddenly you can sell a movie like that. Kind of in the same vein of what we're seeing with the Emoji movie where the only way they can sell a movie is to say, well, this film is anti-Trump and all that. And again, regardless of what you think about our, our president, that's fine. Think what you want. But... Let a kid's movie not, be a kid's movie, and let it be about fun and learning and comedy and whatever. <clears throat> but, of course, we know the emotion movie is going to completely suck, but that's besides the point. The point is, is that don't try to sell your movie under the shell of social justice and pretend you're fighting for someone's rights, an ex-minority group. But you're really just doing that because it's, you're trying to follow a trend and trying to get up with what's popular. Okay. And politics is. is politics is a divider. Politics has always been a divider. Why do you want to engage on that? And like, I don't care if T.J. Miller, like, to go on the Emoji movie again when he's promoting it. I don't care if he was joking about it either. You're bringing a political, uh, political uh, uh, discussion into a movie that's not. It doesn't have anything to remember do with the, Remember that why? thing, that little scare with Rogue One? Oh, it's right, secretly anti-Trump, and oh, there's so much. Like, uh, and I saw that, I'm like, it, it, I don't see anything Trump-related in this. I can see a bunch of stormtroopers right. that are a little bit better like at Rob, shooting, but that's yeah. about it. And, it sounded like Rob wanted to say something there, and then we'll... Actually, I got a few yeah. quick questions there. We can uh, just, just a quick thing. Carrie, Dol Carrie Dalton. Hi, Carrie. She wants to uh, know our thoughts on Kingsman, the Golden Circle. Looks interesting. Ooh, all right. Yeah. Looks fun. Looks very cool. fun. Really All right, a quick Moore. one we Demi can get Moore out of. Looks fantastic, oh. but that's besides the point. Keep going. Okay, and then uh, Were You Boy, he's, he just wanted to know what our thoughts on Zendaya's character in Spider-Man uh, coming. You can check <laughs> out the roundtable on that. We get a lot of our opinions. Otherwise, I can pretty yeah. much say real quickly that pretty much all, everybody didn't like it but me. I didn't really care. I thought it was okay. I didn't have an issue. I thought it was a giant cop-out. 
<laughs> that was yeah, a cop so out. Like, it kind of was. And it's like, oh, by the way, my name's MJ, but it may not be Mary Jane, though. Like, it's kind of this thing where. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, you never know. Like, she's. Uh, just a, yeah. I'm sorry, guys. No, no, no. no and I'm then we got, we got a few Solano? other questions. Yeah. Jason oh, got... Clement's got a good one. Uh, what do you guys think of the Orville? And that's the Seth MacFarlane uh, <laughs> space show. We that talked a little doing? bit about it, but yeah, it looks pretty funny. Can't wait to see it. <laughs> that actually looks better than Discovery. Yes, it does. Uh, oh, we got a question yes. from our our girl um, Amethyst uh, who asks, "Do you guys think voice acting is an unappreciated craft?" Absolutely. Oh, yeah. As a person yes. who's a huge fan of of like animation and cartoons and all that stuff, yes, it is very true that voice acting does not get the recognition it deserves. We have the people like, you know, the beautifully, awesomely talented Tara Strong. I always like to bring her up every time I can. Mm. I really like the fanboy over here. But right. she's like basically the amalgamation of how to be a voice actor and to really be absolutely the best at your craft. She's basically the male, the male streep of voice acting, pretty much. She has done everything. Anime, cartoons, and and, and voiceovers for stuff, and she's so versatile. And D. Bradley Baker is as a male voice actor, which is another one who's like really, he's kind of like the Daniel Day Lewis. I consider him Dan- Daniel Day Lewis of voice acting, where he's able to literally do anything if you tell him to do it. Like he's so committed to his craft. And yes, I, I, I know this is unrelated to, to film, but it, it, it is such an unrelated thing. It's the same thing with, with motion capture with Andy Circus, where I feel like he deserves some Oscar accolades, where it's almost as if people don't really care about these specific fields because they think, oh, well, right. it's not traditional acting. So it doesn't 30 count. years it from now, acting. they'll make an award called the Andy Circus Award and they'll give they it... better. Yeah, and they'll give it retroactively because in, in the future, 90% of all this stuff's going to be motion capture anyway. But yeah, yes. so moving on, there was a few other quick questions. Um, we had one way back. Uh, Enterstar asks, uh, early picks for uh, Batflick replacement. Yeah, I seen that was one of them. Uh, I seen a good one the other day. I liked the uh, the idea of John Hamm. He wouldn't be bad. That wouldn't be bad. I wouldn't have any debate on that. I can't. I honestly can't think of any other ones. Like in 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 my perspective, John Hamm like for Batman, that seems a little bit too on the nose for me. I guess he's too, yeah. too much like a, a too easy of a choice. You need to do something a little bit left field, well, yeah. but still like like someone you wouldn't think of at first, but then when you see, it, you're like. Oh wait, that actually makes sense. Rob, Kevin Spacey should uh, play Batman. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that's as bad as some of the ones we came up with the other day. But anyway, Rob, you got any choices up front? Uh, no, I just might just uh, um, who's that guy? Um, the guy from um, not the guy from Homeland, the redhead guy, the redhead guy from um, uh, God, who, who the hell was that? He was supposed to be. He there was a rumor floating around. He was gonna be. He was gonna be um. Uh, uh, 007 for a while, and not, and it didn't turn out to be. It, you know, it's it's not true. Uh, what the what the hell is his name? Well, in the meantime, yes, he did somebody Jack Reacher for a while, and just um, oh, well, actually, Joseph Solano asked me who uh, who would I like to see uh, direct. That was what I was um, going to segue to. Yep. Yeah, direct a 007 movie. I said either bring Martin Camel back or an out of the box selection like Kenneth Branagh. Anybody? No? <laughs> no, no. I'm sorry. I was distracted. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. <laughs> what did you say? Um. Um. Yeah, <laughs> Mar- Marty McFly. Uh, yes, Mike. The- Damian Lewis. That's the guy. Yeah. Damian Lewis. Okay. Wait. Did someone say? Uh, I think. Uh, um. Amethyst said Stephen Lang should be old Batman. Do you guys agree with yes, that? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yeah, I, I could choice. see it. I could see it. <laughs> When they were going to make the uh, the Batman Beyond movie, Charlton Heston was supposed to be an old Bruce Wayne. Hey, <laughs> Superman. I'm Batman. Uh, Let's my pills. You did I'm it. You finally to... did it. You took my suit. Damn you to yes, hell. Uh, why Somebody... are you saying that name? Like, my my is that like is that what we're doing right now, stop. sir? Talking like Dane. <laughs> you merely adopted the doc. I was uh, born in it, molded by uh, it. Where'd the name go here? Just flip past here. God darn it. Uh, okay. Aji Lestrange asked earlier what we thought about if we had any faith in Venom. Well, we've got several podcasts already. Oh, <laughs> where we have zero 
zero faith in Venom right now. It's I don't even think suck. Sony knows what the fuck they're doing oh at this point. Oh, my God. No, they don't. No, cannot no, wait no. for that podcast roundtable, by the way. Cannot I, I cannot wait. To, you know what the weird thing is? In a way, I cannot wait to see the Venom movie because I know Carl it's going to fail. Carl Urban was another choice brought up for Batman, and I seen that was another good one, too. But oh, anyway, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But no, I was just saying Venom. I actually can't wait to see this movie because I think it's going to be a fantastic four-level disaster. So I can't mm. wait to see it and just laugh at Sony just fumbling like a bunch of idiots because they don't know what they're doing. And again, like like to touch on this again, because a lot of people think that uh, Midnight's Edge is filled with like Sony haters. It's not that we hate Sony. It's just like we have to throw our arms up into in question of just like, what are you guys doing? It, it's like there's the Cleveland fucking Browns of the movie. Of the, of the film studios. They're like, yes. what? why are you even trying? You know, it's like, no, no, just kidding. Like, no, but they're, yeah. We want good movies from this studio and they continue to not deliver. Like, they keep just giving us hand, is it, silver platters uh, covering uh, piles of crap every time. Well, yeah, it's just like, the clown you know, herself, don't even try. Uh, Pascal ruining everything, and then you have right. Tom Rothman coming in and making it even worse. But the kind the of guy uh, who leveled Fox, by the way, he completely, he said that a Deadpool movie would never work, too. And look and how that went. And all of a this sudden, when Spider-Man Homecoming that... comes, comes out, he tries to take the credit as, oh, I really wanted this movie to succeed. And even though five, a couple years ago, he probably would have said, no, this is stupid. No, let's, let's greenlight that an other anti- movie that, that, that people don't want. Man. He's an anti-franchise man. He, he is, never he likes is, franchises. So. He, and he's very like, right. Let, let's change the character. Make him look much different than he actually is. Let's get, put sew his mouth together. That's how we're going to do it. And well, this like, goes with another question that Aji had above about the Emoji movie and to go along with not to plug Matt's show again, but he, he pointed <laughs> out directly in the show, what the fuck does this movie exist for other than just to make, they think it's going to make money. They money. forced they forced a finance company into making this film to the point where they walked away from Sony. They're like, fuck this, we're out. Peace. You know. <laughs> and this, this was also despite them for uh, not funding uh, Ghostbusters Answer the Call. Because uh, they were uh, initially pointed. Yes, uh, L Star was also the company that pulled out of that one too. Yes, and that's because this company's like, wait a minute, they're 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 realizing that this that Sony has a bunch of shady deals going around. They had a big publicity issue after the 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 email leak or yeah the email hack leak whatever you want to call it, you know. And Amy Pascal's like dangling by a thread even though she's technically fired and no longer works for Sony, she still has her production company, which is in conjunction with Sony, and she has until several productions. Until 2019, is, which is, yeah, the rumor, or the uh, reported date, or year anyway. Big but, yeah, day for Sony, too. <laughs> yeah, Sony, and there is a podcast coming up where we're going to really delve into Sony a lot, so we won't yes. want to get too much into it. But, yeah, the, Aji's question had to do with whether or not they, that we think that Emoji's going to pull the SJW card. I'm not sure what... Emoji there's could certain... even pull out of well, anything. Well, I hear right now there's, there's certain... <laughs> controversy right now because of the Handmaid's Tale tweet they did. Uh, so that that's that's something. It's like it's so. Well, and then you have relevant. the Trump thing. So it's like they're almost like they're just trying to make some kind of yeah. They're like they're trying almost, to fail. Trying, well, not just that they're trying to create controversy around this film because just controversy to some again, kind of buzz. <laughs> they think controversy sells, and that didn't work for Ghostbusters. What makes it think it's going to work here? This movie is gonna fail. I can. It's coming out in four days, guys. I. You know what? I might see if I can get a chance to see it. It's gonna be kind of close because I have so much other stuff to do. Um, just don't ask me to see it. I'll have an aneurysm. I. I kind of want to see it just to laugh at its absurdity. <laughs> to do a whole entire rant, and I can probably feature you in a video too, Matt, and on my channel oh. where we can just go, just completely go at it and just savagely roast this film because this, this is looking bad. Like, I'm not even kidding. When recording, re- when recording, like a little behind the scenes thing here, because I record these things uh, on a whim usually after I see these trailers. I was beat red and sweating when I was done with well, this. You thing. damn near had a breakdown over this fucking <laughs> yes, thing. Yes, I, I did. I, I said it in the post as almost a joke, but I wasn't kidding. And usually Matt writes these things all on his own, but I had to have a little help from Rob this time because it was just killing him. It I was, was I was him. just. Yeah, I was just the door. Matt had to walk through it. I mean, that was the thing. Well, I think I broke the hinges a couple times. <laughs> it's like, good God, what is this movie? What are you doing? You turned right. out a Popeye movie for It's this. like, what's next? The booger movie? 
Like, seriously, it's going to be a bunch of animated fucking boogers running around in somebody's nose. That's the kind of fucking stupidity and point that we're getting here with Sony. And I'm not trying to rant because I've been trying not to because it's bad for my health. But I got to do it because this is just fucking ridiculous. This is not even a fucking movie. This is not a movie. It's a gimmick all around. No, it's an advertisement. Remember what I said at the end of Jumanji is that they only like to promote. They don't know how to write a story anymore. They just want to advertise. And that's it. Even though... even though I love me some Hotel Transylvania, I really love oh. those two films by Gany Terry. Ter- oh, I fucking Ter- hated the first one. I'm sorry. I never what? even watched the second one. I can't what? stand what? I did Oh, like Tom. It. I'm sorry. I think we're going to have to have ourselves a I movie have fights type of segment <laughs> or something. I hate, hate relationship with Adam Sandler for a very long time, and you wouldn't understand. Rob would understand. Yeah, is, you can tell me, you can well, tell me after just, we go, we there go was, off no, the It's just at one time, Adam Sandler had was like at the top of the top. You know, he was considered like one of the, this kid's going to go somewhere. And he had hit after hit after hit after hit. And then he did a movie called Little Nicky. And yeah, everything yeah, Little Nicky. Did. Completely to hell. Oh, to the I'm point where when, when Wedding gonna... Singer come out, people were talking like, you know, this is something. This is a different kind of comedy here. I mean, it, it, he did change comedy there for a little bit. And then he just totally just fucking gave up. And I, I, go with, love, and I still love to... The Wedding Singer, yeah. Yeah, I do too. The, I do too. Yeah. Very underrated movie, and just to just to oh sorry, and just to point out, this is another thing with Sony is they allowed Adam Sandler to just basically take over their fucking company and do whatever he wants, get fat and lazy, and take his friends on vacation, and that's it. That's all he and did. You yeah. you know he did that because those last few movies before Pixels where he's he going out, he admitted it. He did it. Like it's just like it's oh, I just want to just want to get next to Kate up and, and all these swimsuit on vacation because you can't afford it otherwise, you know. I'm going to oh sit next to Kate Upton on the pool. <laughs> you just know he was talking like that in the executive, uh, the executive <laughs> round table. <laughs> he's, on, he's on vacation. He, he, he's on vacation. Jennifer Aniston happens to be at the same resort. Jennifer Aniston, would you like to be in a movie with me? We're going to shoot it this weekend. You know, that's that would just go with the movie. That's, that's, that's how it. that came yeah. about. That's pretty much how that came about. Right. And, then he saw, and then he saw a swimsuit. Uh, was it a Sports Illustrated swimsuit shoot? And he's like, "Oh my God, it's Kate Upton! I'm gonna go over there and ask her." I don't know if it's the actual, if she was the actual in the movie. No, but, oh my God, it's in the movie. Decker? No, I think you mean Brooklyn yes, Decker. Yes, Decker, yeah. yeah. Pretty lady though. So she's like, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Decker is very attractive. Brooklyn, Brooklyn Decker. Let's get her in this movie too. <laughs> let's get her in the movie. <laughs> oh, like a, I like to a, touch the hiney. But, uh, but yeah. <laughs> He's a, he's a film studio <laughs> lech, and now he's on Netflix right now, and that's even worse. Right, and that's the the whole point is he's kind of he. I think he learned his lesson a little bit to a point when he made sure he hitched himself to something that was going to pay him no matter what. <laughs> and I think yeah. Sony learned their lesson with. I think Pixels kind of broke the camel's back. Well, Pixels was a better Ghostbusters movie than Ghostbusters. Right. The call. And I've said this I don't know how many times. Pixels had so much. Uh, Promise. Potential and there. promise, yeah, to be an, a very original film, and that's just it. It could have been a very original film, and he just what did they do? They gave the, it to Adam fucking Sandler. He what happy the fuck? Madison oh. It's like the only character I liked out of that whole thing was probably Peter Dinklage's character, and to some extent, Josh Gad. Well, because who the Josh fuck Gad- first of all didn't get like Edgar Wright or oh. somebody like that attached to this in the first yeah. place? Again, if, if Sony ever had their head screwed on, I would love Edgar Wright to do a Ghostbusters movie, but exactly. they never will. Well, even with Pixels is what I was getting at, too. But somebody in that vein, mm-hmm. you know... Why, because <sighs> they can do action and comedy. Action, comedy. It's not they hard. They handle strange, high concepts. Think about yes. it for a minute. This movie was only going to work if you had somebody who was going to be able to you- take this concept and do something with it for an hour and a half because it was a short film. Imagine you know? this concept, like, you know, it's, you know, just go with me on this, like, Pixels by Edgar Wright. Imagine instead of Sandler's role, and uh, it, it would be, you know, it, it could have been set in London, you know, just another thing, or it could have been set in here. Uh, it would be Simon Pegg as this uh, this loser guy, and uh, Nick Frost as the president. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Minutes, See, just imagine yeah. that. Just imagine that. I mean, that. That works on its own because they have established chemistry, and it's not bullshit. Sandler and Kevin James hand, hanging out at that a, at a bar. Dumb. 
But okay, uh, I think I, I think, uh, gentlemen, I, I think, I think we, we're getting we've, a little uh, over there. Yeah. I think we, we need to cut this off. This is going way yeah. too long. Well, yeah. I, hope we... guys, I hope the audience is listening. I hope you guys enjoyed this oh, rant. We still got a pretty steady. Pretty steady audience I know we kept we do, through the show. I gotta say, I thanks, we guys. We appreciate for those who are staying, even though we went all, completely Thank off the rails. Um, um, Neil had a question again. Uh, he's uh, <laughs> if Marvel if Marvel got the fant- got the rights back to Fantastic Four, who should direct the movie? And on a side note, he adds, "I it needs to be someone who really gets the four, and the family element needs to be a four." The answer is no, and 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 no, 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 just enough. No, just enough for the Fantastic Four. Yes, it's enough for a while. Let it go. Stop. We'll it's get into more. Of, no, we'll get into more of that when uh, we get okay. into the Fantastic Four. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, go no, ahead, Rob. No, 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 no. All right. <laughs> what do you call it? Said, um, like uh, Joseph Solana. Uh, what about a potential Pez movie? Sounds delicious. Oh, <laughs> oh my get fucking god! Get out. That's what's get next. Out. No, no, That's we're done. We're done here, guys. We got to leave. That's so hey, I don't know any fucking ideas because they're probably listening to us, man. No, just kidding. I don't live very far from the Pez factory, so I. I oh, I, I can see Sony I'll doing that shit. There. I'll run next down there and see what in the works. <laughs> All your favorite flavors are coming to the big screen. And we're gonna have another movie with a bunch of Kellogg cereal products. No, no, no. We need to stop. <laughs> I can Sugar go the movie. Pez the movie, starring oh. Eddie Murphy. Hey man, oh, no, 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 hey, no, man. No, no. <laughs> hey, hey, you just won't stay down, man. <laughs> okay, All your done. favorite we're Sony done. characters, including Spider-Man, is your favorite pest guys, dispenser. We're done. It's All time right. to stop. It's time to All stop. Right. Thanks for we're joining us to... once again here at Midnight's Edge After Dark Live. We're actually the first time After Dark Live. So just so everybody kind of knows the schedule, we are planning on doing this on Mondays and Thursdays at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, correct? And 9 yeah. p.m. Central Time. So... Yeah, you'll have to plan accordingly depending on where you live. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining us again. Like I said, support us on Patreon and, of course, like and share this video if you liked it. Tell your friends to subscribe and don't don't forget to let them know that Midnight's Edge After Dark exists. Yes, We're doing of course. Gra- don't forget to ding the bell, too, if you haven't. Please support us on Patreon and give and us course, $5, $10, $100, $100. Any, give us $100. Give us $100. Yeah, a your firstborn male. No, oh. we don't need that. No, I don't need to take care of any more damn kids. Anyway, <laughs> point I'm is, already young. I am already the yeah, child. That's all we need is a kid to come in the mail. God damn it. No. Anyway, <laughs> God damn it, Barry. No, we actually got that's more viewers it. now while we're doing this stuff than we did before. But anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, go ahead. What and, is, it's, the, it's Pez. Pez, it's Pez. Pez, 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 Pez always, draws a, always draws a crowd. But yeah, check out Robot Shlomo on YouTube, and you can check out Rob's videos there, and Beyond the Blizz, of course, on his links. You can check those out right on our uh, feature channels right here on Midnight's Edge After Dark. Thanks again, guys, for joining me. Yeah. Oh, you're right. welcome. All right. <laughs> Eat Pez. If anybody wants, uh, like, I'll plug this right away since we talk Ghostbusters. Uh, I do have a group on uh, Facebook. It's called uh, the Ectoplasmic Containment Chamber. So um, stop by for some uh, ATC-free Ghostbusters <laughs> if you want. Right. Right. But, okay. uh, and, we're, uh, we're trying to get something started up with a, a Ghostbusters uh, podcasting of some sort. Yep, we're working on that. Fun. So we'll get to that in a later date, and we'll explain mm-hmm. what that's all about. And that might be something that we'll get into later, obviously, like I said. And thanks again for joining us here at Midnight's Edge After Dark. Right. And, uh, of course, I just wanted to interject real quick and plug a few things just really quick. I know I have my channel there, too. And if you guys are into cosplaying and stuff like that, I got a big uh, video, a bunch of videos coming out for that as well, too. That's one, the, another thing I do professionally. So look out for that soon. It should be coming in the next week or so. I've just been so slammed having to do a, all a bunch of other stuff. So, yeah, just follow me at Beyond the Blizz. And, uh, of course, I know Rob also has his channel, too. Robot Solo, as you know. And, of course, also our other guest here. Um, the good old... Uh, I want to make sure I get your name correct. Good old Matt, because I he just wanted to say Rob in my head. Matt Weiss. <laughs> for some reason, anyway. So we thank everyone for joining the podcast. Of course, my co-host today, or for now on, you know, of course, Tom Connors. So yep. catch you guys soon on the next podcast here Thursday on Midnight's Edge After Dark Live. Tune in next time, and we'll discuss more spin-free analysis of Hollywood and blah 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 and, and blah. <laughs> And all non Pez related news. All non oh, Pez related news. You Pez. never know. Tic Tac. Tic Tac's the movie, everyone. Tic Tac's. <laughs> okay. And we're done. You're up against the, the traditionally August releases are 
one are films that studios don't have any confidence in. Exactly. And um, except you know, except for uh, a couple years ago when uh, Guardians of the Galaxy that was an, actually that was an August first release. I don't know if you guys remember remember that. And that's the kind um, of yeah, the mentality I'm having. Do it in a time where it's got no competition, so the word of mouth yeah. can help. We already did that. Yeah. Suicide, Suicide Squad also copied Marvel and did that in the same date, pretty much. Oh, yeah. The yeah. August 1st or 2nd. Now, I think it did help Suicide Squad to do as well as it did. I think the brilliant marketing, not to get off topic too much, helped Suicide Squad to succeed. And that's because it was able to own the month. And that could have been the same thing with Apes. And I think August is perfect for Apes. It's kind of the, the last hurrah of the summer. Yeah. And I think the feeling of the Apes is like, it's not, it's not a midsummer movie to me. It's more of an end of the summer because it's like, it's kind of a, it's kind of a fall movie, but not quite there. So August does right. fit better. It fits better for that, and you can make it a little more cerebral, like Dave seemed to be leaning towards more cerebral but with action. And I think it would have worked, but unfortunately, they thought, "Hey, middle of summer, it's gonna work." And well, I know I saw it, Matt it. saw it, right? And I don't know about yes. the rest of you, but we loved it. And I thought that this is like Oscar Oscar caliber shit. And unfortunately, it's not gonna get any notice. But I mean, between it'll the effects and the story and the acting. Awards. Oh yeah, yeah, but that's, that's not that's it. throwaway. That's a given, you know. It's 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 you know it's going to get that type of accolade just because it is a technical based film. But actual like let's say acting, screenplay, directing, yeah, it's probably just going to get pushed aside. Yeah. And we of course we know how biased the Oscar, the Oscar committee can be, just because a lot of them are coming from an older generation. They're like, all oh, these new movie technical movies, all oh, it needs to be dramas, and that's a whole other topic. I don't want to well, get just, into that. Just from. Just remind the Academy that Andy Serkis, uh, who plays Caesar, is British. That's 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 that'll do it. Yeah. Okay. True. There you go. Well, we have a long show to, show ahead of us, guys. So I thought we may try Great. to yeah, celebrate things a little Kind of move bit. on. Yeah. So let's let's, so move let's get on, into yeah. Ghostbusters. Correct. Yeah. Well, we were going to cover some topics. Well, we were going to cover some topics, but yeah, we might as well just get into Ghostbusters. Want a new drug? And we have Matt here, of course, of Matt's Trailer Breakdown, as we mentioned earlier, and he's our resident Ghostbuster expert. Even though we've all been around long enough to have seen the film and love the film, I think beyond you like the movie too, right? The original. Yeah, I've seen. Mo- yeah, I've seen most of it. I was seeing it, when I was seeing it on TV. I was like, oh yeah, this movie's actually pretty, pretty, pretty good. It's not too bad. Saw it. Saw it in the theater, in 1984. Then snuck into the theater next door. Saw Gremlins. Oh, <laughs> I do love me some Gremlins, though. I do love that. So, so <laughs> Ghostbusters and Gremlins in the yeah. same night. Now, I got to ask you something, just because, and this is real quick, because I know a couple of you even lived out in the... Uh, Rob, you lived, did you live out in the New York area at that time? Yes, yes. Now, there was rumors that at that time, Ghostbusters was, well, like, really... It upset a lot of people over in New York, so a lot of the reason, like, Gremlins outplayed Ghostbusters, like, two to one in ticket sales, I guess, in that area because of that, because people were so pissed off about Ghostbusters shutting down half of New York for most of the year before that. Is that true, or do you remember anything like that, well, or... That I, well, I was kind of I was I was a bit younger then, but most movies shot in the, that are shot in New York shut down a good portion of the city anyway. So, I mean... Yeah, there was probably probably something to that. I mean, uh, and it, if you listen to um, WCBS radio, which is based out of New York, you will often hear, you know, don't go on the west side. There's a movie shoot in the in the area, you know. So there are, yeah, there are a lot of people who get ticked off about that. But I don't think in enough numbers to really uh, make a that huge a difference at the box office, though. Like I said, I could yeah. be wrong. If anybody knows better, I'll Well, I know they them. played really well. But anyway, yeah, go ahead on that, Matt, because you're our expert. <laughs> um, on the commentaries, they talk about it a lot that uh, the scenes that were shot outside the firehouse and uh, 55 uh, Central Park West, where uh, uh, the Gozer building, of course, and um, where that that would uh, be the, the top two spots particularly. And I think the hotel sequence is one of them, too. I'm not – I can't remember that exactly, but I know for sure those – the, the firehouse sequence where the, the containment uh, grid uh, uh, shuts down and the ghosts are released is one of those uh, scenes because the hook and ladder eight building is on a, I think it's on a corner of one of those those active uh, those active uh, bergs if uh, uh, Rob right. can uh, confirm me if I'm right or wrong on that because I'm pretty sure that hasn't changed since the 80s but yeah, that, um, that area that, a lot of that area is still the same. And they uh, use it in other movies too, yeah. Yes, um, but I'm pretty sure it was just those two avenues particularly that were just, you know, really chaotic and hectic because they had a lot of shooting 
outside of those buildings for either exterior shots or just you know the the big uh, the big uh, climactic scenes of the film itself. Right, which famously is where they had to purchase the. They had to definitely get the Ghostbuster name because they had a bunch of extras, hundreds of extras screaming Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters. But anyway, oh, onto God. the, yeah, That's onto okay. the Comic Con news. Go ahead and give us a rundown quickly of the Comic Con news, Matt, that you can remember offhand. I know I was kind of excited to see some of it, and very unexcited to hear and see some of the other stuff. But go ahead and give us your overall uh, observation of what came out of Comic Con because that was the big news early on. Yes, so. Apparently, it looks like Paul Feig is out. So I am more than okay with this because it's been something that, that like, because if you're, you, everybody seems to remember because Midnight's Edge covered this a lot, where <laughs> Paul Feig was, Paul Feig was one of the uh, primary problems with the film, if, if no one knew that already. Oh, yes. <laughs> because yes. It, this may turn into a trailer breakdown rant, and I can hear Rob laughing already, so this is already starting <laughs> off well. So... Um, it seems that Paul is out, and I think that's probably one of Hollywood. Hooray for Hollywood indeed, because I don't get what they were thinking and why. Well, and other than Amy Pascal picking this, which didn't need to, like three times, and like it's it's the beckoning of Beetlejuice for Christ's sake. I'm like you just you're just asking for trouble. You're just asking for trouble with a guy that does subversive comedy, where Ghostbusters has never been a subversive comedy, nor has it been a comedy first. It's a comedy. It's a comedy glue of a right. of, of horror and and supernatural. Right. Supernatural That's the joke. Vibe. Is that all these guys are playing it straight, basically, except right. for there's a little wink, wink from Venkman to from, the camera yeah. because he's kind of the Bugs Bunny of the group. But otherwise, all these other characters are playing it completely straight, and there's where the humor comes out of that. Right. And so we go back to you know, answer the call did not did not. I mean, everybody likes to fight about that. Like, oh, it, it, it uh, surpassed the the market needed. It did not. When Paul Feig came out and said that we need a half a billion dollars from the box office, including uh, home release sales, too. Like, that was this little hooray for Holtzman thing where, again, they're trying to push one character. They know they have a problem when you have to push <laughs> one character out of the titular four that they said, these are your four uh, these are your four female Ghostbusters. Women are funny. Get over it, shtick. Right. And that again this wasn't a woman problem this was a writing problem this was right. a chemistry problem there was nothing in this movie that showed like other than you know bits of improv that you just knew paul feig and katie dipple the co-writer of the script had nothing into it right well then just to kind of relate to what the news we'll get into more of that kind of stuff on a we got a podcast talking about sony coming up and we'll probably really dig into that quite a bit but um just a very very good in comparison, considering it's a reboot after what happened before the whole Sony fiasco. And the Amazing Spider-Man, just to interject, that whole thing really damaged right, the Right, that's brand. what he meant, yeah. Mm. And it, you got a lot of people, just like with Wonder Woman at first, that were a little leery to go see it, but then the movie decided, you know, people come, decided to start showing up, and you're starting to see that now. In fact, I think number-wise, I'd have to look for sure, but I know Spider-Man is getting very close to Wonder Woman already overall. So it's, it's, it's going to be a neck-and-neck -neck race come to the end of the year until, like, Star Wars comes out, where a lot of these top movies will kind of peter out here at the end of the summer but we're kind of getting to that point where we're getting to the end and valerian was just another one that was stuck in with a bunch of competition and what about dunkirk making 50 million dollars who expected that here's i mean, expected it to do well but go ahead yeah no here's the thing tom sorry to interrupt i i, I think i think uh dunkirk specifically did very well considering the competition and the and the time it came out that goes to show you that christopher nolan sooner or later is going to be in the conversation with the greats like uh, I would say even Spielberg <laughs> some people may even say in terms of the, his consistency and the quality of his films and the fact that he's able to one of the only full, few directors now that can actually get butts in seats with the name alone I also right. but I do say this I do think if Dunkirk would have came out in November like a November date and really pushed that Oscar buzz and really went for right. the veteran kind of war film demographic. That usually, it seems to and me... And that's what I thought they would do, but I think I know a reason why they didn't, and that was because they didn't want to go up against Thor and Justice League. That, and, that makes sense. That makes sense. And I pointed out right away that I think Warner Brothers has learned with, uh, at least with Interstellar especially, and after... Uh, Inception that Christopher Nolan is that type of director where you just got to say Christopher Nolan directed 
blah 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 and people will show people up will it doesn't matter it. Yeah. what the hell it is yeah. it could be a guy parked on screen for 20 minutes oh. and the critics would say that's brilliant you know but still it's just a point i mean i'm not trying to cut down christopher nolan at all i love him as a director he's a great director i'm looking forward to seeing dunkirk i'm just saying he's just that he's gotten to that point now where all people have to say is you know, like I said in the last podcast, just like Scorsese was back in the day and stuff like that. All you got to say is it's a Christopher Nolan movie and people are there. And they proved that this weekend, I think, with a 50 million. Nobody expected it to do 50, I don't think. Yeah, I think, again, yep. it has to do with his name. Even though I, I would predict that it would have actually made maybe close to 80 million, not even maybe possibly 90 million if it opened in a holiday, like winter, like a uh, fall date. And just neg- you know, negate the fact that you're pointing out, Tom, that this is a smash hit for a film like this. You know, very, you know, kind of especially this time of the year. Yeah, Yeah, in this time of year during the summertime, where people aren't really looking to see that. Now, one thing I will point out: Did we discuss the girls' trip? Did we mention that yet? I know that came in. I was about to say that. Yeah, right. It's interesting because you know, uh, this is going to sound a little controversial, but let's be real here. I'll say, I'll put it this way: Girls' trip pretty much is what Girls' Night is for a another demographic of i'm 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 black well it did better but it's like okay i look at it this way this is going to show hollywood and i hope they're listening and they get the actual right message this time right if you do good quality i don't know all the good quality of it is but if you do at least original material directed at women they will come out to see the film if it looks interesting Uh, this movie proved that bad moms proved that you know and i gotta admit bad moms was one of the funnier movies of this last year so i think it was this last year it came out right Last yes. year, somewhere, last year. Yeah. yeah, somewhere around last year, I th- right? Well, I think last November or so. Yes, oh, right. Time. And then they got the sequel already ready for this Christmas. But regardless, this just goes to show that if you do something that women will be interested in and make a good product, I'm assuming it's good. Considering you know, obviously, women talk and they tell their friends just like everybody else does. This is a good movie. Go see it. it. Seems and like the it numbers was show. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll check real quick. Double. Um, let me check Thirty-one right million now. dollars for a female-driven comedy is a massive hit. It has about a yeah, seven, that's... seven, uh, seven percent approval rating overall, like a seven percent. But the audience rating gave it about a four, four point four, like a ninety percent. So the audience rating is really high, but the critic rating is pretty. Well, that's good. nothing new. It's yeah, good. that's not. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's not surprising. But that means this movie looks like it's probably one of those movies. Like this is going to be this year's Bad Moms is what I'm trying to get mm-hmm. to. Without rambling. Possibly, on. possibly. I mean, if you know they're going to have a universe is going to do a sequel. I mean, the only reason why I was bringing up oh. before is kind of this thing where it, it, some people can say, "Oh, well, it's basically just you know a derivative <laughs> of um of what we saw Hangover. with Rough Night. No, it's Rough Night. You oh, know, a female centric I... movie is just right, with yeah. a for, for a blacker audience. And I mean, right. it's kind of this thing where, even though that may be the case, it's ironically is getting better reviews than Rough Night did from Sony. So it's very interesting to see that kind of play out a little bit. Where well, not only this, this was kind of perfect. Not to interrupt you, sorry, Beyond. No problem. This Go is ahead. kind of this is kind of perfect counter programming to Dunkirk. Mm. It is. It is. I would say that. Yeah. Is, yeah In a way, it was like they played this almost perfectly. They're like, all right, we've got an idea here. The guys are going to go see either Dunkirk or Spider-Man or Valerian or War for the Planet of the Apes. Let's give the women something good. And they knew they planned this perfectly almost. This is one of the few times where I would say besides Dunkirk now where they decided to actually release a film properly and do a good job doing it at the same time as far as getting it out there at the right time and it making a lot more money than it probably could any other time of the year. Because, yeah, you could he could have released this in November. Warner Brothers could have pushed it back, but they've got Justice League then. And then what do you do next? You put it in December. Okay, well, there's Star Wars coming out in December. So, you know, and there's a ton of other Oscar bait in that time. So I think they just mainly wanted to avoid the Oscar season Mm -hmm. for a reason. And and at first I thought it was a dumb move, but now I see it was uh, the perfect move. But yeah, we should move on from this. But any more thoughts on that, guys? Well, just one. The girls... um... Was it Girls' Night? What was it? Uh, Girls' Trip actually has a twenty-eight million dollar budget, so they've already made that back. So, um, yeah. So we'll, we'll we'll get a sequel to that. Um, another thing: Spider-Man: Homecoming is actually hanging in there at number three, and actually beat, did beat War for the Planet of the Apes this week. Yeah, here's the thing about million dollars. Planet of the Apes. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, yeah, that's another upset. Oh, yeah, that's real kind of War for the Planet of the Apes isn't doing as well as I think it should be doing. 
don't know if you I guys agree. agree. I think Dawn had a similar pattern, unfortunately. It was one of those movies that a lot more people discovered later on on cable and video. Again, same thing with the first one. Do you it think... did respectably, and same thing will happen with this one, but yeah. Okay. Do you Go think ahead. there's a possibility that perhaps, even though the films are phenomenally rated, that there's this thing where it's not able to entice audiences, as we're clearly seeing here, where... It's great, gets great reviews from critics and fans, but audiences in general don't aren't really looking at it too much, at least at the level that I feel like it should be. I could be wrong. I think it's. I just but... say I think it's just more so the competition. To be okay. honest, mm-hmm. if and I've said it before, if they would have pushed Apes off at least till August, oh God, it would have owned August. Because I can't think of anything coming out in August right now that would even remotely touch it. Even so, sub- like even something like September would be like, yeah. uh, well, I, I, I'm not trying to push so, it off the no, off the no, no. But then you entirely. got the problem with the kids being in school, and that's where the studios oh, will say, "Fuck that, no yeah. way." So yeah, but August, I think early August would have been perfect here, like in about a week and a half, two weeks, or whatever. Even if you opened it on a Wednesday night, you know. Right. Well, the tradi- then you kind of get into the other news. So they basically announced that there will be another live action film besides the animated film in 2019. Correct. Yes, uh, I believe the animated film is going to be in 2018, or I, I think something in that nature, because they didn't talk about Ghostbusters Ecto Force, which was uh, Ivan Reitman's uh, discussed animated series, which was going to take place in uh, the 2050s. Sort of, I was wondering if there would be any light shed on that, or if that's completely dead all altogether. Because he seemed pretty avid going forward on that, because that left a little bit of an opening to whether or not this was going to be ATC or the Prime eighty four team, which IDW Publishing, the guys that do their comics, has referred to the original team as being the Prime Ghostbusters. And um, right. And that's supposed to be the team we're going to see in this new film. Now, my question is, I heard and I read about a little bit about it where it's going to be a prequel. Is that true? Is that um, true? It's not confirmed yet. It, they kind of gave a little bit of feeling towards that. I thought the animated movie might be that prequel because the rumor is, is that that's going to be the Slimer movie. Because oh, everybody everybody wants a Slimer movie. Remember, remember when the real Ghostbusters cartoon came out and everybody wanted Slimer? Well, there is some validity to that because I do remember <laughs> as the movie was coming out last year, they were talking about the animated film kind of being about Slimer because the film was supposed to be a setup for that or something like that. The, the, well, the, the little well, adventure he has in the film. some stupid yeah. little thing where he goes to a portal and that's it. I'm like, uh, I haven't seen that movie since I saw it in the theater and I'm just like, I don't want to ever see that movie ever again. Because that movie needed a lady Slimer in it because, oh. you know, we, we need to have one on each side for each for each gender, for each gender for everybody. Like, yeah, everyone's yeah, so. be equal and then blah, 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 and let's shoehorn <laughs> throw, all this the crap. Throw, this is, the throw the f on. Who, the, who yeah. the fuck cares if they're what gender they are when they're dead? <laughs> Lady Slimer, it's got me wonder what his Tinder profile looks like. Jeez. No. Oh, right. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 anyway. Okay. Let's anyway. Start. Um. Yeah. So like, there was some crossovers. I was actually excited to see. There's like a big Ninja Turtle crossover, and I love the yes. look of that that comic book cover that we have the picture for in our uh, <laughs> right in there. Our graphics there. It's right there. That was actually pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I like that because the... it's also paying homage to Turtles too, and I like the turtle yes. figures. But now I'll get to the part that I didn't like. <laughs> All right. And that is that so... this can't let the girls die. I'm sorry. And it has nothing to do with them being women. Don't get me wrong. It's just, okay, it has... let me put it a better way. I, they won't let it answer the call die. Yes. So, yeah, they, they need to push uh, that under the rug and just act like it never happened and do it again. You can do a thing where you have the extreme Ghostbusters where you have this one chick. You. That one chick, uh, what's her name? Kylie Griffin. Kylie get her. Griffin. And well, she... it, the, the... The, the funny thing is, is that the whole thing that seems to be pushing this uh, crossover that no one, no one really expected to do, especially after Ghostbusters answered the call, and like the first thing I want to point out is that this is a, a huge retcon to fix something that should have been done in the first place. But I guess you know we got to fix this up because this is just nothing more than a salvage operation. But here we go. Um, so the answer the call, uh, the answer the call, uh, uh, Ghostbusters Prime crossover entitled. Uh, Ghostbusters 101 for IDW Publishing had this where the the two universes basically collide, but there's a third team as well, and the the third team is uh, a team led by Janine Melnitz, uh, the the receptionist for uh, the Prime Ghostbusters, uh, because 
Uh, and first off, like just to, let's just say that that receptionist will always be better than a dumb Chris Hemsworth right off the bat because that's not going to push any kind of character whatsoever. Anyway, the character uh, Janine's niece, uh, Kate Banner, leads uh, three other characters to be the Ghostbusters 101 team, oh, and God. they have more character than the the mm. ATC team. Mm. And Throughout this comic, it's just, you know, oh, we're different, we're different. And there's a couple slams in there, too. And I thought it was remarkable, too, that uh, writer Eric Burnham, of the he's been the writer for the series and uh, the ongoing uh, Ghostbusters comic series since uh, 2011, that uh, he threw some jabs into ATC, like very thinly veiled jabs, where by the end of the series, it looks like Holtzman is the only one wearing the, uh, the ATC garb. Right. Well, just to kind of move things forward, yes. though, then. So, so then um, there's going to be this, besides the comic crossover, it kind of, they kind of hinted from what I could tell from the footage on the uh, Monday Matt video I saw where they were kind of hinting that they were going to try and cross over the girls into the original Ghostbuster universe on screen as well, is what uh, I kind of got, sounds... was the basics for Ghostbusters 3. And oh, my God. That sounds yeah. ridiculous. I mean, here's the thing. Again, I keep mentioning <clears throat> Extreme Ghostbusters, where, again, you had that one cool chick... Uh, you know, Kylie, she was, you know, female representation is fine. I mean, nothing's not terrible, but she no. wasn't a shoehorn character. You know, she was, you know, cool. You know, she's part of the team and everyone seemed to be okay with her. And it was fine. It, was, it wasn't this thing where, like, every five seconds she stops looking at the camera. I'm a woman and I'm a Ghostbuster and I support girl power and you better accept oh. it. <laughs> it's like, uh, that's what it was with Ghostbusters Answer the Call where it's this constant thing where we get hammered over the head constantly over and over and over. And now I'm going to start to rant now where it's like, uh, oh, well, <laughs> you know, everything has to be about girl power, blah, blah, blah. I know, of course, of course, our, our narrator, Rob, here was the one that narrated the entire debacle of this Amy Pascal, like, ah, well, I'm Amy Pascal, and I really want this like, a female empowerment movie. And then even though it fails, I, I, I remember I, had, I got into a Twitter fight a couple months ago where someone, some, some, it came up in a conversation, I forgot how it started, but it's something about Ghostbusters, and I'm like, Ghostbusters failed, it was an absolute failure, and the movie's crap, and whatever, I was just blatantly pointing it out, and you remember this, Tom, because you got into it a little bit, too, and there were these bunch of social justice warriors that were defending it, saying, well, uh, well, it made, more than, yeah. it made more than his budget, and, 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 like, and we're like, no, 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 that's not how films work, that's not how yeah. it works. Uh, marketing, marketing. Yeah, marketing right. and well, of not course, just that. Yeah, theater and chains, that what they things. get for it, and all that. And it's basically where I'm like, just, just admit it. This movie's garbage. It's not good. And I think I even said it. Like, I think the death nail in the whole thing. I think would put it down was like I said. This movie didn't even make as much as the original movie did in 1984 dollars. Fuck inflation. You even, don't even have to get on that. <laughs> even the sequel made more than this. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, there was trying to people trying to play off that the, this movie made more. This than is the better sequel. than Ghostbusters too. I'm like, oh yeah. well, you know, because it's a carbon copy of the first one that you just gotta hate this movie. And I like Ghostbusters too because it's an I actual too. Ghostbusters movie. Right. Like, but, but anyway, um, yeah. but anyway, it, it has it's, its moments. Yeah. It does. Like, there's moments. There's the 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 what is it? The courtroom sequence. <laughs> She's a harbor chick. I mean, I where are you ever going to see size, Ray? Where where are you ever going to see a uh, a Statue of Liberty powered by an NES Advantage joystick? I'm like that. That's just that. That's just a power a testament that Ghostbusters rocked and Nintendo rocked the world. Not to right mention, there. That, but Rick Moranis stole the second movie even oh, more so than he did yeah. the first movie. And but just to move along, so yeah, that was kind of the big announcements. Was there any other big announcements that you wanted to touch on to Ghostbusters before we moved oh. along? Oh, yes. Um, so not only are they going to try and uh, Kylie Griffin, uh, I think it's more Holtzman that they want to inject in this one where the others are just going to be cameos. And I'm like, eh. I actually like Holtzman. I'm not, I'm a, Holtzman's a guilty pleasure for me. Uh, I mean, I don't understand for me, the whole steampunk kind of slash yeah. semi goth kind of well she's she should have been egon's me, so. she should have been fucking egon's daughter yeah, that, than the that's true, that's for this true. Yeah. the catalyst for this whole thing yeah. but anyway to move along yes yeah, so go ahead Matt. So they're they're think. going to be injecting that and the biggest offense that seems to be coming out of this is that harold ramus's last work for ghostbusters the video game from 2009 is now considered non-canon 
Which I don't see why they had to do that. There's no reason to. You can still do uh, Ghostbusters. They, they could have even made a movie that. out of that right there. They could have just like it said, is you know the what? movie. And that's and the that's movie. the thing. They can even they can even remaster it. Like they can have the movie. Here's how easy for them to make money. Take the the game, make it into a script, make the movie, then make a remaster of the original game that people can buy for like a really good decent price. Yeah. You can make so much profit, then have maybe uh, some merchandise tied in too. Yeah, just up the level. Yeah, I would have been all for that. But uh, unfortunately, the problem with the game is. Is some of the performances are a little stagnant. And we're not going to say um, who. <laughs> hey, oh no, who? I can't hear you. Never mind. Anyway, so it's certainly not Bill Murray. <laughs> of course it is. Not Bill Murray. Why would you think anyway, that? Moving on. Moving on. So right. other like, than that, like Ready Player that, One, gentlemen. Let's talk about Ready Player okay. One. All right. Yeah, well, right. I think Matt had one more thing to add there, but and then we can move along. The, yeah. The thing is, the biggest offense of that is, is that that kind of throws away the canon of what the the comics did, because the the IDW publishing comics that started in 2011, as the ongoing series, were based entirely after the events of the video game. So they're throwing away all the comics too. It makes so, no sense. It makes no sense. And the Ghostbusters and the Call Team are getting their own mini series in October. Yeah, I've seen that too. So anyway, then are they are they gonna are they gonna throw away the Larry Storch, uh, Forrest Tucker gorilla version too, or is that? I, so... No, I think that's I think that's immortal. I think you can't touch that now because that that's probably more Ghostbusters than the ATC team. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, uh, moving along to Ready. Player. Yes, we need to talk about oh, Ready yeah. Player One. Ooh. This cool new movie that has a lot of video games and Iron Giant is in there for some reason and, uh, and Deadpool, and Deadpool. Did you, did you see Deadpool in there? There's Deadpool and Harley Quinn. They it's make a cameo in there. Yeah, they're there. I tried to catch as much as they're possible. They're there. But if, I'll you, tell if you, you what. look at look at um the, the main guy, I forgot his name, where he's walking into this like hall room filled, filled with all of this techno babble. You see Harley Quinn and Deadpool both walk towards the camera from the left side. So they're there. And there's another shot with Deadpool where he's with Iron Giant, where Iron Giant's coming in out of nowhere. And then you have DeLoreans and all this other crap. Can someone please explain to me what this is? Because I'm not going to lie. I have no idea what Ready Player I... One is. All I know is that it has to do with some guy in a video game, and it's like Tron, sort of. Tron, I think. It's Tron meets Fast and the Furious, meets Iron Giant, meets Deadpool, meets Harley Quinn, meets um, Dystopian like Future. Yeah. <laughs> but, but why Iron Giant? I don't understand why. Is... I have no idea. I know why. I, I know why. Warner, Warner know Brothers why. has the rights. Why? Exactly. Tell us, please. Matt is correct. He, very good. He got an A today. Because if you notice, <laughs> outside, because outside of the DeLorean, everything that you talked about, well, except for I didn't see Deadpool. But well, remember, Harley, Deadpool's in there. Deadpool is in there. I swear, I, I swear everything my life else. Is. Everything else besides the DeLorean and Deadpool so far that all of y'all mentioned, mm -hmm. and you missed Freddy Krueger. Oh yes, all owned by Warner Brothers, and mm -hmm. that was the same thing that I didn't like about the Batman movie, and I didn't really discuss in my review, and I probably should have, because the bad guys were cool, but they were all fucking Warner Brothers characters. They, why didn't they even at least try to get a few other villains like Darth Vader? Shit like that is all I was going to say. You're talking that's about the, the Lego Batman the, movie? The Lego Batman movie. Yeah, all that movie kind of, the, like, on a side note, that movie kind of underperformed a little bit, which is kind of interesting, did it not? It did not do as well as they were hoping. I liked the Gremlins. I liked some oh, of the other villains. Oh, there's a right there on the screen. Oh, you missed it. I, okay, I didn't really. Uh, I could try. I could try to make out some of it, but it was right so there. blurry. And that yeah. was my. That's my only complaint so far with this trailer is that I love the idea, I love the concept, but I'm so sick and tired of these CGI epics. If you're going to do this, this might as well have been an animated film. Okay, I see Deadpool now. I I see it now. Yeah. Yeah, he's more of the comic version of Deadpool. He's not really the. Uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, they I don't think they they'll be able to get away with that. <laughs> no, right. No, no. So they obviously they obviously and being Spielberg, I'm sure it was real easy for him to farm out a few people to get in. Oh yeah, like, yeah obviously Spielberg the DeLorean. Cool. The DeLorean, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, anybody so, got any more you know like feelings on? I didn't. I, I want. I'm kind of looking for it, but I'm just kind of. Eh, yeah, like you I don't seem like to be that effects. into this Tom at all. You're just kind of like yeah. Hey. It's like the effects. I'm getting so played out on these overly drunk, just too much CGI, too much. I want more practical. I just, I want more practical. But and let's, I be honest, honest. let's be honest here. You can't do this with super practical. Well, no, 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 no. no. Yeah. Right. This is one of those things where it's obviously set up for this. But I don't know. I, I, maybe this trailer just didn't give me the representation I needed, and too much is too happening too fast. It doesn't seem to be getting a lot of traction either. Like this, yeah. This, 
This to me looks like Avatar but with, with video games. Yeah, That's I what it looks like. Avatar and Tron. That's what I think yeah. I told you matter beyond before. Yeah. It looks like Avatar meets Tron. I said, yeah, just kind of. Okay. Do we, yeah. okay. Uh, is anybody going to predict if this is going to be a, uh, I don't want to see it. if this is going to be a mediocre return for for Steven Spielberg. What was because what was his last movie? Bridge of Spies. Yes. Yeah, but no, that was yep. kind of more of a vanity project. Yeah, that, that was more was, like was, Oscar bait. Yeah, a yeah, lot. Shit, like, this will be his first return to commercial film since God, because otherwise they've all been more like vanity projects and Oscar bait since what? Um, since ever. I mean, since War of the Worlds. Probably, mm, yeah. yeah, that sounds about right. I'm trying to think here. May I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> unless somebody out there in the chat can tell us otherwise. Put it I'm in the to, comments. Put it in the comments. Yeah, I'm trying to think of Spielberg's last fun movie he did because he used to do that. That used to be his routine. He'd do one fun movie, then he'd do a serious movie, then he'd do a fun movie, serious movie, fun movie, so on, so on, that's, so on. That's what ga- that that routine gave us a, a go- uh, uh, not Ghostbusters. I wish. <laughs> The Lost World Jurassic Park, so we, we got that a little bit. Well, so. not only that, it was also because we also that, ugh, that was the reason we got Schindler's List and Jurassic Park in the same yeah. year as well. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So I don't want to say I don't want to say I think this is going to bomb, but I don't think this is. It, it just looks like a crowded mess. It seems like right? another Valerian waiting to happen. And Joseph that, Solano, oh. and that's the kind of vibe I got to it from it too. But Joseph Solano said in the chat that big BFG, big friendly giant or big fucking giant, whatever the hell it was, the Spielberg giant, was yeah. his last fun, unquote unquote fun movie. But I don't remember anybody saying they had any fucking fun at that movie. But anyway, sorry. My, my to... theater was dead empty. <laughs> Zippo Zippo says Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was quote unquote oh, tin, fun tin, to shit all over. Pointed out though. <laughs> Joseph did point out Tintin, and I think that did get a little bit of that did get some good reviews. <laughs> I said I said Valerian is this year's Tintin, another foreign <laughs> property that that they just expect everybody to flock to see, which they don't. It's just a hollow movie, like one. Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Midnight after, Midnight's Edge After Dark Live. We are coming to you right now from various locations. With us, out, all, as always, is Mr. Tom Connors. How are we doing tonight? And we're doing pretty good. With us again is Mr. Matt Weiss. Hey, Peter. Yep, Matt Weiss. If you haven't checked it out, check out his trailer breakdown of the Emoji Movie. It's it's fun stuff. And with us once again. From Hearts Unknown, Weight Unknown, the number one pick in the NFL Supplemental Draft, Mr. Beyond the Bliss. How you doing? Not too bad, gentlemen. I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, you're going to be, be bringing, raking in that nice uh, Canadian Football League money now. So, yeah. Well. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we, we can't all get that big Montreal Alouette money. Jeez. <laughs> so, all right, you guys. Busy weekend. We're going to be talking box office. We're going to be talking Comic-Con. We're going to be talking Ghostbusters. We're going to be talking Thor Ragnarok. We're going to be talking Star Trek. And so let's kick it off with the weekend box office wrap-up, shall we? What do you guys think? Sounds good. Absolutely. That's a good place to start. We got a couple of viewers, so I think we're doing all right. And and, and if actually, if uh, if we have time, maybe we'll take a couple questions. What do you think about that, guys? Yeah, sure. If we got time later Perfect. at the end of the show, we'll definitely do that. So to kick off the box office, what a surprise upset. Well, not a surprise so much to myself, but probably to a lot of people out there, especially some of our listeners, that Dunkirk did take the top spot. It's strange that a non-summer movie took the top spot and Valerian, well, to no one's Ooh. real surprise, tanked <laughs> badly. <laughs> So, guys, what's your thought on that? And I'm not sure. I think I'm between me and Matt. I think we're the only two who have seen Valerian. Or did you get to go see it yet, Rob? Uh, I have not gotten the chance to see it yet. I have read uh, one of the some of the original uh, comics that actually uh, that Andre sent me. Uh, So I do have a point of reference, but I I haven't (laughs) seen the movie yet. Right. Well, we won't talk about it too much anyway. And I don't think Beyond you got a chance to see it yet either, right? No, because everything happened with the whole accident and everything, and that's. And we're glad you're okay. Yeah, he was. He was supposed to join us on that uh, very first Midnight's Edge podcast, but <laughs> and we had other plans and stuff like that going on, but he had been dealing with a fender bender, so luckily he's okay and everything's taken care of. But yeah, we might get into a little Valerian talk, but what's your guys' uh, thoughts on the upset of the weekend? It's like, you know, it was like a drag them out weekend, it seems like. I'll say this. I want to say one thing. This is very important. This is why Valerian failed. The two lead actors pretty much suck. 
I think you all can agree they're not good. And here's, here's the thing. No one, I, I think I said this a podcast ago, that no one ever says, man, I really want to see a Cara Delevingne and Dane DeHaan movie. No one ever says that. <laughs> she was okay. He was just horrible. I, Not only that, like, completely miscast, and he acts like Keanu Reeves through the entire that, film. I, I'm not that, surprised. That, I'm not surprised because I've heard that. And also the thing, too, is I've heard that uh, he, he kind of he doesn't look the part. He doesn't look like this really cool, like kind of macho, sort of Han right. Solo-esque, to be, I'm guessing. To be clear, the, yeah, the character is supposed to be your yeah mix between like a Han Solo, almost 007 type, because he's a uh, international or uh, inner galactic federal agent is he's what he's a he major is. he's a major and you don't get that feeling from from little goblin jr you're like good lord <laughs> yeah that's a good <laughs> reference yeah yeah, yeah. It's like dane, pizza DeHaan. <laughs> <laughs> dane dehan does not scream leading man to me i'm sorry no, he doesn't. you know yeah but uh without, and without beating up too much on valerian but it, it just seems like it's all that that kind of twilight eyes sort of leading man thing where you make him sort of this sort of this soft kind of not soft but you know this softened features you know very kind of non what's the word um uh non um no oh, well you know you know you guys know what I'm talking about right yeah he, he sort of fits into that Robert Pattinson mold of leading men yeah um, hopefully like, that's not going to last much longer <laughs> I, I certainly hope because it it just seems like, like a very out of left field thing to have Dane DeHaan doing this. I think uh, uh was was it Carol? Or I'm, I'm Cara, getting the name. Cara. Right. I think it's Cara Delevingne. Is how you Cara, Cara, Cara Delevingne. Yeah, Cara. Yeah. She she's been getting a lot of hate towards this. I, and articles have been pulling up. I'm like, what what's the hate here? I mean, Dane's. I think Dane's just uh about as uh or no 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 just worse than uh, what Kara's doing here. So, like, it's it's not a terrible... Like, to me, it's not such a, a terrible movie. It's just dull. It's just incredibly dull. It's just, like, this ha- could have had so much more promise and it doesn't deliver it on any stretch of the imagination. And that's the other part. It's lacking so much imagination in a film based entirely on imagination. <laughs> yeah, I mean, here's the thing. The, the visuals... From what I see, of course I didn't see it, but the visuals are fantastic. They look they like some of the best that I have ever seen, just from the trailers. However, Man. they didn't really do a good job selling the movie. They just be, and again, I didn't see it, but I'm just basing off the trailer that they just said, "Oh, hey, there's a movie." And I said this last podcast too. There's just a movie about uh, about p- two people, Cara Delevingne and Dane DeHaan, need to do some stuff, and then they do some stuff, and stuff happens, and then more stuff happens. And it's pretty, but stuff happens. It's like there's yeah. no real sense of, okay, there's an actual underlying plot going on here, and there's some character dynamic, whatever. And people don't notice, and, and I'm going to plug film, film theory, theory on this, because they're, they appointed to me, not appointed to me directly, but they made a video that it came apparent to me that a lot of things from Star Wars that were taken from Valerian, a lot. Oh, and yeah. it's interesting mm-hmm. how... This could have been a chance to say, "Oh, this is the this is where that that kind of weird zany. I believe it's French comic. This is where it all came yes. from." And I'm like, and they're like, they, it could have been a return to form. It could have been something like, "Oh, so you think Star Wars is great? Wait till you get a load of this." And I feel like it could have been a great competitor to Star Wars and kind of be like, "Oh, we did it. For, you may have done it first on the big screen, but we're gonna take the rain back." And of course, from what this, from what we're seeing here. <sighs> This is an utter disaster. And it's funny because oh, yeah. Luke Besson last year was like, oh, man, that that Christopher Nolan, man, he ain't that great. He ain't that good. And then all of a sudden, ironically, Dunkirk slaps the crap out of Valerian and Valerian bombs. $20 million. Wow. That's even worse than I thought it was going to do. I mean, that's... Uh, yeah. And, and the three hundred million dollar budget, I believe, overall, with everything. Yeah. Uh, well, two hundred reported, and I'm sure with all the advertising that went along with it, <laughs> at least two fifty altogether. And and we already know that this movie is going to kill Europa. So yeah. it, it, well, yeah. I just I had just read that oh, actually God. their stock tanked actually. Oh, after. I wouldn't be surprised. Well, yeah. No. Just... <laughs> one of the things I noticed though is that you know, I was looking actually through the listings. After even after well, it's been out for almost for three weeks or so, Spider Man Homecoming. Spider Man Homecoming had twice as many showings than Valerian did. And it just I can't help but think movie movie theater chains were right. saying we're looking at him like well, we can't show this. You know, we we can't commit that many screens to it or runtime right. to it. Because yeah, Spider Man is still gonna be doing well. 
Well, Spider-Man and, is doing well, and that's a big misconception going around, guys. And I want to reiterate, because Andre wanted me to reiterate, reiterate to you guys, sorry, I can't talk tonight, that Spider-Man Homecoming is doing very 